All right, Blake and Aaron show. Coming up at 8 o'clock, we're going to highlight another restaurant for Restaurant Month. Mm. Pretty ah. excited. Door number four will be in studio and bringing food in. I haven't been there before. Have you? Ooh, yeah. You have? It's nice, yeah. In the so, Grove? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. There's, a, there's nice places out there that we all need to try out. Yeah. This is what Restaurant Week is all about. I hear they have an amazing short rib they're bringing in this morning and Ooh. some pumpkin yeah. seasoning. Pumpkin risotto. Ooh, I love pumpkin risotto. Mm -hmm. yeah. Or as in, the, yeah. isn't it risotto? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I, don't know I got corrected yesterday. It's not risotto, American. It's risotto. risotto. I don't know. Uh, we also have some gift certificates to give I'm away. It's Italian, so it's risotto. Risotto. I don't know. I think you're right. <laughs> Time is 725 right now. Big news. I have some important news for you. Interesting news. It's Blake and Darren's Spilling the Tea with Sandy. <laughs> K-Man's top news headlines of the day from CMR. Oh, good morning, Sandy. How are you? Hello, Blake and Aaron. I'm doing fantabulous. How are you guys doing? Good. Wonderful. Is it risotto or risotto? <laughs> risotto. So, <laughs> <Okay>. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you got you to say it like you know the language that it's it's from. Which yeah. I'm assuming it's Italian. Hmm. Hold on a second. Let me hear. Let me, hold on a second. Rosado. No. no. Rosado. Is, is that what Google trans Google no. whatever it's saying? <laughs> it's not Rosado. It's now, definitely not Rosado. Now I'm questioning Gruyere. 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 Now I'm questioning Gruyere. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> all right, what do you got for us this morning? Uh, all right. <clears throat> well, um, happy Wednesday. We have an accident this morning at the Linford Pearson um, Highway. The end hmm. of Linford Pearson. So if you're Stuck in traffic, and you might be wondering why um, that could be. <laughs> Where at? Do you know what part? It, it, they said at the very end of it. Mm. So um, I guess if you can take Crew Road, that might yeah. be your alternative this like morning. Where the, well, I like where the far horse? Yes, exactly. Yeah. I, I bypassed that this morning because I saw the fire trucks there. Oh, well, there I went that way. And so I went, there, I went down. It just um, happened. What's that? What's that side road called? The airport one for whatever, the, Jose's like, Rubis. Through, yeah. Oh yeah, I forget what that's called, but yeah. Mm. So, um, yeah, just keep an eye out on that. So, a woman has been charged with obstruction of justice. It seems like the police are still um, charging people. Uh, they 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 appear to be all kind of connected, and we're waiting to hear, obviously, the full details. But mm -hmm. a 39 year old has been formally charged with two counts of obstructing the course of justice and one count of conspiracy to cons obstruct the course of justice um, for something that took place in uh, October 8th and 9th. So, this is really, really interesting. Trying to dissuade a witness from giving evidence in a court case in which she was the defendant. So, folks, <laughs> if you didn't get the memo, if you are a defendant in a case, have nothing to say to any of the um, individuals involved in the case. You, that would be your best, if I were your lawyer, and I'm not a lawyer, but if I were, if I slept at Holiday Inn last night, I would <laughs> tell you to, to not speak to anyone involved in the case. And then they've also arrested a 57 year old on suspicion of the same thing. Hmm. Um, he's not yet been charged or continuing their investigations, but he's now on bail. My goodness, what a mix up. Hmm. But um, I think that, you know, the police have really taken a very firm stance as of late on um, anyone who is trying to interfere with um, court proceedings or, you know, I dare say, um, even an, an investigation, as we've seen before. If you're harboring a fugitive or whatever, they're going to come for you. So just don't do it. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Um, we stopped by the farmer's market yesterday. They have a lot of concerns about security after people have been stealing their goods. So there's a particular tenant there. She's the latest victim. And she has said that she's not going to be continuing to pay her monthly rental fee at the farmer's market. What if are they're doing? Stealing tomatoes and things? Yeah, they're stealing produce. Hmm. She, had, she had over 100 pounds of pumpkin stolen. What? And I mean, like overnight or in front of her eyes? No, 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 overnight. Oh, they and keep the stuff there. Yes, and they have them under lock and key. Like she has her double padlocked, and they mm. go in and, and break the um, you know, the padlocks on the little. Well, yeah, uh, you can go to LTS and buy a you know a lock cutter. Yeah. <laughs> so you, she said to. she said that listen, you know, it's about time. She's not the first victim. The little zippy place got robbed um about two months ago, um, 
and she's saying that it's about time that they really considered having some sort of security at night, whether it's install CCTV footage or yeah. CCTV cameras, sorry, or actually have a live security guard patrolling the location that something needs to be done and she's demanding for something to be done. And until then, she's not going to pay her rent. Um, she's going to put it aside and wait for them to fix it. Okay. So, yeah, she's taking a very, very firm position. Um, so there's been a man oh, that's been have security there like overnight, though. Is no, there, like, that's a... what I was just saying. No, they like, should have CCTV, though, at least. Yeah, there's yeah. no security, there's no cameras, nothing. So it's it's a bit of a problem. Hmm. So there's been a man, Noel Paul Manning, who has been missing for some time now. Um, my gosh, we've reported him missing about 100 times. And he still can't be found. And the police have finally given a bit more information. Because when they said he was missing, you're like, okay, are they looking for him for his own good? Like, is he, you know, on a binge of some sort and people are concerned about him? Well, no. It turns out that he's wanted by the police in relation to sexual offenses. So this might help in the event that anyone knows his whereabouts or might be hiding Noel, um, Paul Manning, 53 years old. This will certainly help that, you know, he's wanted by the authorities and potentially dangerous sexual offenses. <laughs> very, very serious situation. Wow. Um, so they said that he's no longer considered missing as such, but is believed to be hiding from the authorities. So um, Mr. Manning, man up and turn yourself in. Uh, he goes by the nicknames of Indian, Doc, and Doctor. Mm. Um, they Not say a real doctor though, right? <laughs> no, 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 no. Mm. Slim build, and he might be sporting a ball head uh, with uh, white facial hair. So I'm glad they've given us a bit more information because for the longest time, we were kind of like, what is he wanted for? Um, he's known to be frequenting the Bodden Town area and maybe living in an unfinished or abandoned structure. So if you live in Bodden Town, I would say keep an extra eye out. Um, and they're also, once again, reminding people that if you are assisting him in any way, mm -hmm, that is an offense to mislead or act in a way to prevent the apprehension of a person. You're looking at conviction uh, to find a $5,000 or imprisonment for two years or both. Not so, worth it. No, not at all. And he's done some bad things. It sounds like exactly. It's this is a guy you want to you want to get off the streets. Okay. Um, so yeah. So Guyanese uh, nationals will be particularly happy to hear that um, they can now travel to the UK visa free. This is very good right. news for them. Yeah. Um, there's a couple other countries that are on the list as well. So I think Colombia was also included in that, but basically they've lifted the visa restrictions so that they're now able to um, travel more freely to the United Kingdom. And it was actually said that um, Guyana is the UK's largest trading partner in the Caribbean, which is kind of interesting. They do um, 50, 506 million pounds and it accounted for about 21.6% of the UK's trade with the Caribbean. So that's kind of an interesting little fact. Yeah, so there you go. No one's right. needed. Well, I've got, I've got. Um, let's go back to the uh, the first breaking news story, and that is uh -huh. how to say risotto properly. Um, oh yes, right. <laughs> you you have Rosano. a, a native. Yeah, yeah, I actually have I have Maddie uh, from K Rock in uh, studio, and and he who corrects makes, who he makes risotto. He does, and he corrected yeah. me yesterday. Yeah. Oh. I did. <laughs> yeah. Well, see. <laughs> What, what, you, what you what you guys have done uh, to, 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 the, to the beautiful Italian culture yeah. is Americanized it to the point where it's unrecognizable. I mean, there's no such thing as Parmesan for a start. It's Parmesan. Parmesan. All right. How do you say risotto? How do you say? Now risotto? wait a minute. That, that accent sounds very English. Where's where is he from? <laughs> yes, he's from Liverpool. I'm from Liverpool. Uh, oh, okay. We, uh, but Are I, you speaking I do Italian? Have Italian? Italian? So, sorry, what was that, my love? No, I was asking if you speak Italian as well. I, I speak a little bit, a tiny okay. bit. I do have, I'm, I'm, I'm about a 16th Sicilian. You ah. can say risotto. I, I can Parmigiana. Say, Parmigiana. Can, Parmigiana. 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 And how do you say risotto? Risotto. What? Risotto. That's a, that's a, risotto. <laughs> I'll say, I'll say how an Italian like, says it without the accent okay, because so. that would be cultural appropriation and yeah. I won't be doing that now. Okay, <laughs> say it again though. Risotto. 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 That's what we say. Isn't that how it's Risotto. 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 Risotto.
Yeah, that's it. What does that know? Know? Oh, so so they're right on the on the oh. on the Google. <laughs> <laughs> and, and and how do you say Parmesan? What is it? Well, it it, it, it the anglicized form is Parmesan, uh, but it, it should be called Parmigiano. Parmigiano. Yeah, Parmigiano. 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 Well, I say Parmesan. Parmesan is a that's a that's a Jersey New York thing. Like, right. like a brujul oh, and, and gabagool and all these words that don't, <laughs> they don't what, exist in Italian. Let's see what the Google, the Google says. Parmesan. See? No. There's no Z. Not, it's not Jean. Parma, I, I yeah. say Parmesan. There's no Z or, G, or J in it. Parmesan. I say yeah. Parmesan. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> who's, who's, who's this farmer Joe guy? And what's he got to do with it? <laughs> Thanks, no, Maddie. <laughs> all right, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> Have a great show, guys. Right, Thanks, you too. Maddie. All right, uh, Sandy, there we go. We got to the bottom of this unsolved awesome. mystery. Yes. Um, Ken Sandy's show right now. On, unsolved uh, mysteries yeah, and mispronunciations. <laughs> hey. On Bobo 89.1 FM. We'll see you tomorrow. For All the first right, day. guys. Have a good one. You. Yeah, I felt like I was having a segment this morning with Soka. Where's Soka? She's always uh, correcting our English pronunciation and otherwise. Good morning, everyone. Happy Wednesday. Peppermint, sorrel, ginger, fever grass, or English. Get it ready. Your morning tea just got hotter. Ooh, honey child. On the cold hard truth, Bobo 89.1 and Cayman's number one talk show are bringing you morning talk like no one else. Monday Rewind, Impact Wednesdays, Caribbean Connections, and much more. Don't miss a beat with what's happening in the local community. Just keep sipping your tea. What a mess. Here's your host, live and direct from the Cayman Islands, Sandy Hill. Sometimes you got to make it easy, easier on people to understand what you're saying, honey, chill. I get it. You know, uh, we pronounce things differently depending on where we're from. And sometimes we're getting it completely wrong, especially if it's a, a um, what do you call it? A word that has foreign, um, a word that has foreign origins. <laughs> and sometimes we have anglicized a word that isn't, you know, an Anglo word at all. And so it has definitely been lost in translation. How are you guys doing? Yeah, it happens to the best of us, I suppose. So happy uh, Wednesday. we got a full and exciting show for you guys this morning. Um, what's one word that you used to pronounce? I'll tell you, when I was a kid, I was horrible with the word alcohol. I used to say alcohol. <laughs> and then when I went to the States, you know, you want some rubbing alcohol. And they were like, what? What are you saying, ma'am? We don't know what that word means. What is that? Are you speaking a little a foreign language? They used to think, you know, as a Caymanian, I think sometimes we might speak a little bit fast and all these other things. And they used to think that I was speaking a foreign language. They'd be like, oh, don't understand you. What is it that you're saying? Yes, honey, chill. Um, so it goes. I was at the grocery store the other day, and there was this lady who stopped me, and she said, oh, Miss Sandy, I'm so happy to see you. You look so beautiful. I was like, oh, that's so nice of you. And she says, you know, um, she sounded like she could have been from, I'm not 100% sure, but maybe... Banaca or somewhere I heard a little bit of like a Spanish accent in there but like they probably spoke English but you know they also spoke Spanish as a, a second language and so I heard this Banacan maybe accent but anyway she said um you know there's something on, that you say on the show all the time when you go mm 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 and she's like, you know, where I'm from, we say, mm -mm, and you just add an extra little mm on it. So I'm like, yeah, you know, we all have, um, I suppose, our unique ways of adding a little bit of something, something to what we call language. Um, some people obsess about the English language. And I say, listen, English isn't the easiest language in the world to understand, but I feel like when you only 
speak English, you probably, you know, find it easy to criticize other people who speak other languages. But remember, it's a lot more difficult to actually speak more than one language. I mean, your brain has to do a lot of processing. Yes. Um, I have my my word of word of a day calendar. I've been meaning to do word of a day. Uh, where is that calendar? Yeah, I've been meaning to do word of word of the day around here. But I think we should make it word of the week. And then once we once we know the word, we're going to use it in our uh, what what do these fancy people say vernacular? <laughs> yes, honey, chill. Uh, let me see now. Uh, oh yes, here it is. I haven't, I haven't even opened up my word of the day yet. 365 new words, words a year. So that's one word a day. Let's see what the word is for today. Um, last time I had a physical dictionary was a long time ago. Whew, I need child. We don't use dictionaries anymore. These are pretty cool. I love these. They have them like in trivia. They do life hacks and all sorts of things. You can get these easily. They make little awesome gifts too like an Amazon and stuff like that. So today is what date? The 19th? I think we should do like a word of the week and then that'll give us time to like pronounce it and everything, right? All right, so today is uh, October the 19th. Let me see now. October, see, Wednesday, October the 19th. Oh gosh, what is this word? Sakad, it's a noun. It's a small, rapid, jerky movement of the eye, especially as it jumps from fixation on one point to another. Okay, so they have it as in reading. Uh, Saccades are guided by what we're paying attention to, even though we're often blissfully unaware of them. Um, I'm not familiar with this word at all. Let's see how we actually pronounce it according to... um, According to Google, <laughs> we, have to, we have to rely on Google to tell us how it's pronounced. Um, mm-hmm. Corrective saccades. Oh, wow. This is a whole thing. This this one's a little bit, it's, it's French. So I'm sure that we're probably totally mispronouncing it. But um, a rapid conjugate eye movement that shifts the center of gaze from one part of the visual field to another. Yes, I'm not sure sure when we'd be using this, but you know what? When you have a word of the day or word of the week, you just force yourself. Uh, you just force yourself to, to use it. So we're going to come up with creative ways and how to <laughs> how to use this, I think. So it's a French word meaning twitch or jerk. And it uh, galloped into English in the early 18th century as a term used in horseback riding for quick check using the reins. Uh In 1879, French ophthalmologist Emile Javal, or whatever, (laughs) I'm sure that's a different French pronunciation, observed that a reader's eyes make a series of short jumps when he referred to, which he referred to in French as saccades. It wasn't until 1938, however, when experimental psychologist Robert Woodworth wrote about the pioneering Javal in his saccades, uh-huh, that the ocular use of the word was seen in an English publication. Isn't that interesting? It took a long time from 1879 to 1938 to actually see it in an English publication. So let's see how saccades, let's see how it's pronounced. Aha, uh-huh, here. Saccades. Saccades, we're totally wrong. Saccades. Let's hear it again. Y'all ready? Saccades. Saccades. Hmm. So, cades. Saccades. Yeah. All right. Saccades. That's our word of the remainder of the week. Find a way to use it. Mm-hmm. None of us read newspapers anymore. So, um, what else are you reading, like physically, that your eyes might be saccading? <laughs> you figure out a good sentence to put it in and let me know. Um, I like how when they do the pronunciation, though, they break it up into like phonics. So it's like S-U-H-K-A-Y-D-S, saccades. That really helps you visually. Uh, That's how I first started to learn Spanish on my own. 
before I took classes, I used to do, it was called the Charles Berlitz, like book of Spanish or whatever. And everything was done like phonetically. And you know, that's how kids learn. Um, but they, they don't spell it the wrong way to make them learn it phonetically. But when you're, when you're doing a foreign language, learning how to spell comes later. It's like the pronunciation and everything else. So yeah, Charles Berlitz had a lot of, you know, phonetic spellings and it just made it easier to be able to pronounce a word properly. And I, I credit that book for one of the reasons why, for the most part, my Spanish pronunciation is actually pretty good. Mm -hmm. Although I'm not fluent in the language, you know what I mean? All right. Good morning. What's going on? Let's see who's here with us this beautiful Wednesday morning. We have Miss um, Vernita says, uh, good morning, angels. Be good to one another. Diamond Princess is here saying good morning to the lovely people. Uh, Marshall is also here. Good morning, Stephen, joining us from the UK. Um, we have, uh, oh, oh, I forgot to send out the links to everybody on, on WhatsApp. Hold on. We got people saying, good morning. Where are the links? Hold on. Good morning, Mr. Wayne. How are you? Um, let me just do this real quick. Buenos dias. Okay. Un momento. All right. We've got Karen who's here. Good morning, Karen. Miss Ann says good morning, Brack. Good Brack morning, sorry, to all. Yes, we're going to be talking about the Brack a little bit today. Honey child, the Brack is a hot mess over there at the moment. There's a handful of people trying to run havoc on the Brack and they think they're baddies, boy. Mm -mm -mm. So they go to jail because somebody becomes somebody, a little side chick up in jail. <laughs> Nilda, good morning. KK says he was missing because of this situation. What a hot mess. Nothing more on the other guy who's missing. Um, no, I feel like he might have left. The, there's some story about him potentially leaving the jurisdiction. It was weird. Um, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You find that most people go missing because they uh, they want to go missing, I suppose, right? Uh, when is Cayman going to let people travel out of the country unvaccinated since the U.S. ain't business anymore? The U.S. has lifted the vaccination requirement. When did that happen? What do you mean they're not business anymore? I wasn't aware that you can enter the U.S. unvaccinated. Uh when did that happen? If that happened, I totally missed it. Morning, Richard. <clears throat> morning to Miss Barbara. Wee Wee's here. Miss Morna's got it locked. Good morning, Daisy. Buenos dias. JD says, um, I have a word. Oh, Lord. He has to pick the most complicated word in the entire. Is that like the longest word in the English dictionary? Okay, let's see how much, how closely we can butcher this one, JD. <coughs> Sorry. <laughs> That one is so long, it's even making me cough. <clears throat> All right, we have <clears throat> methyl chloro isothiazolinon. <laughs> Are we close? Methyl, methyl chloro isothiazolinon, or something like that. Boy, that's just a long word. He says it's a common ingredient in soaps and shampoos. Listen, <clears throat> if the word is that long and complicated, it probably is no good for you. <laughs> you probably shouldn't be using any soap or shampoo that has that in it. Ooh, probably full of chemicals, honey chill. Because uh -uh. <clears throat> they had to make up all these, they had to make up a word, putting all this stuff with it. <clears throat> so, um, Yeah. And it's methyl chloride. What a mess. All right. Talk what you know. Good morning, fam fam. Benji, <clears throat> good morning to you. Carlos is here joining us from Dallas, Texas. Hey, Carlos. How are you? Are you Caymanian living in Dallas, Texas? Or are you just an American who found us and enjoy listening to the program? Texas. Shoot him up, Texas. Good morning, Darlene. <clears throat> she says, good morning, Cayman and the world. Lizette is here. Kimmy 
So good to see you. Miss Amiria's got it locked. Honey, chill. She said, ooh, what a blessed uh, and beautiful day. It sure is. Uh, Miss Pat, I haven't even looked outside, but nonetheless, it's so blessed and beautiful. Coming in from the West, says Pat. All right, all right. Come on through, honey, chill. <clears throat> Jonathan says, no, you can only enter the U.S. if you're unvaccinated, if you're a U.S. citizen. So that hasn't changed. KK, what you talking about, honey, chill? Uh, Richard <clears throat> Parson joining us from Cold Rock, uh, Cold Round Rock, Texas. Carlos says, I'm a Honduran who lives in Texas, but loves Cayman. Been there three times already. Ooh, very good. Beautiful. Welcome. Hey, Anthony. <clears throat> Sipping iced tea this morning. Does that count? Whatever your beverage of choices. <clears throat> you guys hear my throat is a little bit croaky, croaky. I got me some hot tea. This is Yogi. I don't even know what flavor this is. Um, and then I've got some water on standby. Uh, it says, live righteously and love everyone. You will build up around you an aura of light and love. That's my little yogi tea message for the day. Nice. Okay, Doki. So what do we got on, on tap for you today? So make sure that um, you listen to the entire show today because uh, about an hour, the last hour of the show, we're going to do our Cayman Voices series. This is the first time you'll be hearing it, I kind of think, really, on uh, the morning show. So Cayman Voices, I'm so excited about. It's like something that I've been trying to do for a couple of years now. And really, oh, my God, it's just about who we are as a people. You know, Caymanians are very, we're kind of a mixed bag. Uh, but I think we're so... Like our stories are so interesting and unique. And I've been wanting to interview, especially our older heads. So I've got an interview scheduled for Sunday with a gentleman who just turned 87 years old. He's a firecracker. So I know that that interview is going to be so much fun. I've known him. I'm not going to name him yet, but I've known him for many, 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 many years. And he's just such a fun person. Like his energy, his vibe, his aura is like, 30 years younger than he actually is. Just, I mean, 87. You would never think he's 87. He looks good for 87. He's still out there doing his thing. And uh, so we'll be interviewing him for future air date. But um, anybody 70 plus, I'm trying to get to those people urgently. So if you know of anyone, please, by all means, um, let us know. So yes, we have Mr. Wenzel Burlington who is going to be coming up on today's series. So twice a month, we're going to do Cayman Voices. And then I will I will do it separately on the um, social media channels in case someone might have missed it here so that you can view it there as well as a separate interview. Yeah? Soka is here telling us that, that this long, ridiculous word is the longest word. It's numos. <laughs> Silicovolcini Conosiosos. I don't know what the hell that is. All right, hold on. Let's see if we can get it in the English language. Hold on, hold on, hold on. We're going to get it. A child just typing this out is going to require brain power. Um, you can definitely see where. This is words again put together. So you see pneumonia in there, new P N E U M O N O S I L I Covolcano. Covolcano. Okay. Uh huh. Here he is. Um, they actually have it online as two separate words. So is it is it considered one word? Here's how it's pronounced. We are looking at how to pronounce one of the longest words it says one in of the, the longest English words. Lord language. Jesus. But first of all, what does it mean? Yes, this is an invented mean? long word said to mean a lung disease caused by inhaling very fine ash uh -huh. and sand dust from a volcanic eruption in particular. So how do you go about pronouncing it? Here it mm -hmm. is. New mono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. It sounds pretty hard and difficult, right? But it's Just not it actually down. too bad when you break it down into different parts. Yes. So let's do just that. New mono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis. 
New mono ultra microscopic silico volcano coniosis, right? No, it's not so that hard. You know, I feel like if I, if I go to a doctor and he says that to me, I'd be like, um, come again, doc. What are you saying? Some people love big words. They love to use big words to kind of, you know, make themselves feel special and important. Um, there was a politician some years ago, no longer a politician, who used to use all these fancy words when they would speak. And I would think, you know, yes, you might have a PhD or whatever you claim you have, but um, the ability to know a word, use it correctly, which is fine, but also use it for your appropriate audience are two different, very different things. You're speaking to the average Caymanian who you want to vote for you. What's more important? Sounding intelligent with some word like this, numeral, blah, 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 blah. Or actually connecting with the people in a meaningful way so that they can actually understand the points that you're trying to make. Hmm. I'm just saying. I mean, if you're in an academic environment, you're a physician talking to each other and you use this word, that's perfectly fine. But if you're going around trying to uh, elicit votes from people and, you know, you're trying to use the, all the big words in your vernacular, I would say that you're completely missing the mark. Morning, Ms. Sheila. Pat is drinking a cappuccino. Mm -hmm. Richard says, I'm a Caymanian living in Round Rock, Texas. Looking forward to coming home soon. Yay. Nice. KK says, my uncle had a good memory uh, with history, Dickie Brown. Um, had a good memory. Is he no longer with us? Should I add him to my list or what? Tell me. Obviously, I can't speak to the dead, so he has to be he has to be alive. Caymanians, Bobo says Miss Morna. Um, Sandra is looking forward to Caymanian voices. Thank you very much. She says thanks for today. Mr. Wenzel was our plumber for years, a lovely man. Yes, you know, when I first um when I met him. I thought to myself, you'll see one of the questions that I ask. I'm like, Burlington? Where does this name come from? I don't know any Burlingtons in Cayman. Well, as, as you'll find out, there is a very interesting reason why that's his name. Miss Bonnie, so good to see you. Thank you, Soka, so for that definition. Vicky's here. Um, very easy to pronounce. Yeah, once you break it down into all the multiple words, because basically it's like five words put together. Yes, honey chow. Um, thank you, Miss Marsha. Uh, John says foreignism. What are we talking about, John? Ms. Dean uh, Phillips says the US CDC still requires that all non citizens be vaccinated. K Man can't change that, unfortunately. I flew into Miami yesterday and they asked me to immigration. I think they only did it ran they only do it randomly, but you should be prepared to, to show it if they ask. Um, so are they not requiring you to fill out the paperwork anymore that um, you were saying that you were vaccinated? Because before there was like a 10 page document um, that you had to check off if you were vaccinated, traveling with any unvaccinated persons, how old they were, blah, blah, blah. But maybe that's not required anymore if the PCR testing has fallen away. Um, oh, John says the majority of those long words are foreignisms. Well, I think in this case, it's just a bunch of words put together. Jonathan says, I feel like if you said that word to doctor here, he would look at you like, what the hell are you talking about? Well, maybe if he's not a lung specialist, he won't be familiar with it. I don't know. Oh, KK says he's alive. Girl, you said had. I was like, oh, God, is your uncle dead? Good to hear he's alive. Send me his number. Sounds like I need to interview him. Soka says, I never use this word in conversation. It's just a word I learned in school. Yes. And how many of us would actually know how to pronounce that automatically? That would be interesting. Um, when you were a kid, didn't you feel proud of yourself when you would learn how to pronounce, or not always pronounce, but spell a particularly difficult word? You know what one word, when I learned how to spell it, was so like meaningful for no like legit reason, like honestly? Mississippi. When I knew how to really spell Mississippi, M-I-S-S-I-S-S-I-P-P-I, -S 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 -I, -I, I was like, yes! Got all those S's in the right places. Because it's easy to like, kind of mess up that word. Good morning, Oscar. How are you? Uh, says the lipstick is looking fab. Oh, thank you. I love it. The, for the last couple of years, I've been rocking 
pink lipsticks. Like it really brings out, um, you know, the melanin in my skin. In other words, it looks very good on people of color. I feel like you need a little pop of color. All right, Carlos. Um, oh, he's got another big word for us. Sequip pedalian can be used to describe someone or something that overuses big words. Lloyd, a big word to describe someone who overuses big words. Let me see now. Um, that one's S-E-S, Crippy Dalian. Let's see how that one's pronounced. Lord Jesus. Sesquipedalian. Oh, sesquipedalian. Totally had that wrong. Sesquipedalian. Sesquipedalian. You, dear sir, are a sesquipedalian. <laughs> Characterized by long words, long-winded. The sequ sequipedalian prose of scientific journals. Lord Jesus. Good morning, Nelissa. Nelissa, how are you? All right, let's talk about Kim and Brack. Um, so yesterday, was it yesterday or Monday? No, it was Monday. These Brackers getting all up in their feelings, honey chill. And so it turns out that some of them um, look like they have lost their good senses if they had any. Mm, mm, mm. Now, hold on a second here. I got to send somebody something. Um, there was a drug incident yesterday in East End, and somebody was saying, no, 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 no. Um, this not this not happening. This didn't go on. Well, I'm checking my official sources, because it came from an unofficial source. And my official sources are saying, yeah, it didn't happen. And the authorities were supposed to send out a press release. Well, Chad, they ain't did so yet, but you know how that is. We'll wait till this afternoon. And then y'all will go, oh yeah. Turns out Sandy and CMR are right after all. Let me let me say this quickly and then we'll move on to the real topic here. Um, don't get insulted if we say, oh, you know, uh, drug a drug boat came in by the Eastern Star Bar. It has nothing to do with the business. Y'all, y'all are really getting a little bit pedantic. Is that the right word I'm looking for here? I don't even know what the word, what the big super duper word is, but y'all are getting up in your feelings. Shall we put it that way? It has nothing to do with your business. We're just using that. And I'm sure the person who sent the message, just using that as a reference point, location, locator. It was in the vicinity. It doesn't mean that Eastern Star Bar is bringing in drugs or it came in right there, like, you know, the bail is at the footsteps of the bar. If it came in a couple meters, a couple feet, the general vicinity of the gas station, folks, that's all it means. It's like the one the other day down in Bodentown where the man was found in the vicinity of um, Waterboys. The owner is like, oh, it didn't happen. What? Nobody, for God's sake, y'all, relax yourself. Nobody said it happened at Waterboys. That is just a pin. Like, okay, Waterboys gives you a general idea. It was closer to the, sh the Czech restaurant, which is in the back of Waterboys. But uh, 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 if somebody said Waterboys, that's close enough, honey child. And it's not saying anything about the business. I think everybody with a little tops of common sense understands what's being said. Y'all just need to relax. My God. Mm -hmm. Honey, chill. Y'all be like, oh, it didn't come in here. This is fake news. Calm the hell down. Okay. All right. Because we don't only want to tell y'all that drugs came in yesterday. And, and the, you know what is so funny? When people get up in their feelings about this stuff, they actually miss the forest for the damn trees. The bigger point is, if you read the post, is that three men, maybe, came in with the drugs and they are now loose in the Cayman Islands. That was the most interesting part of the post. Not that it frigging came in by the gas station in East End. And y'all so hyper-focused on that, you missed the point that we might have three Jamaican drug runners probably criminals, maybe even carrying weapons, either in East End, Northside, or somewhere in the Cayman Islands. Duh! 
Can y'all focus on the more important stuff sometimes? Lord Jesus, take the wheel. No, sir. Anyway, let's move on. Uh, morning, Miss Dean. Somebody said here that people are, are thin skinned. Yes, honey, chill. They are. Y'all just need to relax. Ah. Morning, Sasoka says that CBP in the US told her it's not their job to ask people if they're vaccinated. So she's surprised that they asked someone. I don't know. Um, all right. So Alice, good morning. Uh, KK says it's not like it happened by the doorstep of the business. It happened near or close to the business. Child, I just don't understand why people see that. And um, they just hyper-focus on the wrong things. Damien says problem is people don't listen and then spread the rumors and damages business. How does that damage a business? Anybody going to stop going to Eastern Star Bar because a bale of marijuana or cocaine or even a dead body washed up there? Y'all don't care. Say it was a dead body. This weekend, y'all would still be frolicking in the water. Don't give one iota about what happened. People sometimes, you guys have heard me talk about this before. It's called the Barbara Streisand effect. Where the more attention you draw to a situation, the more attention you draw to a situation. Nobody said nothing about no freaking Eastern Star Bar until y'all get on there and start talking about it. And then people are like, oh, what's this? All of a sudden people screenshotting it and sending it to me. And I'm just like, sometimes you just leave things alone. You're majoring in the minor, okay? The little pedantic details do not matter. Miss Vicky say you touched them corn. Well, child, they must have the biggest corns in the world. Mm, mm, mm. Uh, Miss Soka talking about tamarind balls. What? Uh, KK says they're probably gone. I'm sure they ain't here rooming around. Not every person stay behind. Well, honey chow, if you know what I know, they come in with the drugs. They probably will be here for a minute doing other illegal activities. And then if they can leave and get back um, into Jamaica, you know, they have to pay for these voyages. They don't normally come for free. So either they're paying with dollars and cents or drugs and guns and other illegal things. Good morning, Mr. Howard. Darlene says thin skin and narrow-minded, that's for sure. That could describe a whole sector of the Caymanian community. Thin skin and narrow-minded. Yes, chill. All right. So listen up, folks. Cayman Brack. Yep. Um, as it turns out, <laughs> listen, this person says, good morning. The bold-faced murder at Vic's bar didn't stop no one from going back. As fast as he opened, people were there just saying, yeah. And that was like a friggin', um, you know. AK-47 or AR-15 or whatever the hell it was, mowing down people. And y'all still didn't, didn't care. You're still back there having a good old time. Traffic accident and the Linford Pearson. Our fire service is on location. I mentioned it earlier. Um, please try to be careful on the roadway. Mm -hmm. All right, let's move on. Kim and Brack, what the hell is going on in the Brack? So for a minute, we've been trying to highlight that apparently there is a problem on the back on the Brack um, with drugs. It's not like the Brackers don't know it. Some of y'all in Grand Cayman might be a little bit uh, in the dark, but we've talked about it more than one occasion here, and I'm going to keep talking about it. Because at the end of the day, we can't be the beautiful Cayman Islands and not care what's going on in Cayman Brack and Little Cayman. It can't be just all about Grand Cayman and leaving our sister islands behind. And the sad thing is, a lot of times in my estimation, what is happening in the Brack is indicative of a much larger problem that might not be evident here yet, but it's coming to our footsteps. 
But we are three islands, huh? One for all and all for one. So if drugs are rampant on the brack, child abuse rampant on the brack, drunkenness, form of a drug, rampant on the brack, um, you know, everything from corruption, we can't ignore it and be like, oh, well, you know, that's not happening in Grand Cayman, so we don't care. Really? We should care. For more reasons than one, but I assure you that we should care. So on Monday afternoon, this Cody Parchment fella, and I don't know who these so-called um, boys are, he started posting some stuff on Cayman Brack now uh, on his uh, Instagram. Now, I don't know if he posted it because, you know, we've been talking about it and we've been talking about how apparently they're trying to intimidate people on the Brack. Oh, if you talk, this is going to happen. That's going to happen to you. And so you better not talk, right? This is a really crazy, and I'm going to show you guys the post here in a second. But this is quite an indictment on the people of the Cayman Islands when anybody can post messages like this. So let's read what this fool decided to post, okay? Because he's trying to intimidate people. And I don't know who he is. Apparently, he got arrested on Sunday for drugs Um, because he's a dealer. And so now he's all up in his feelings. Take that out when you go to court. Tell, tell the judge that. You need to be saying this stuff to the judge in court. And I want to see how badass you really think you are. And I hope the magistrates in this country paying attention. Okay? This is what this dude posted. Let me pick it up here now. Cayman Brack, don't get comfortable with this informing thing. Anna going on. I'll kill that whole Anna. So... This man has made a threat to the entire community in Cayman Brack or whoever he might believe is informing on him. Wow. I mean, y'all are really stupid. You think that you can make threats on social media and people are going to sit back and not go, what? Who are these Parchment boys, by the way? So this is Cody Parchment. I know that I think his cousins or something were in jail, incarcerated for killing that man down at Bananas. So they have already had a taste of prison life. Uh, evidently, it wasn't much of a taste because that doesn't seem to have, have slowed them down in their alleged criminal activity. Creighton Properties. So, um, oh is gosh, expensive. hold on one second. I'm trying to look up the Parchment Brothers to see uh, when this was. So this was the, the banana case, right, where they, they beat a guy. Um, they get seven and a half years each. Are they out already? Are they still in jail? That was 2021. They can't be out. So Jeremy Parchman, Shamar Kelly were found guilty of manslaughter. So they got seven and a half years. So they must still be incarcerated. Is the other brother who I think Kevin Parchman pleading guilty to ABH? So I'm guessing he's already out because ABH doesn't really get you a whole lot of time. So they killed, they killed a man. And then... The whole family must have lost their goddamn mind talking about uh, Cody, who got arrested, like I said, on Sunday. So I guess he got arrested and was bailed on the Brack. And then he talked about Kim, uh, Kim and Brack and Farmers for Dead, basically. You know, the crazy thing about this, folks, is this shows you the mentality that these young men are growing up with. Really and truly. Uh, what on earth? Cody, this, this, is your, this is your life legacy. This is what you want people to remember you as. Cayman Brack, he goes on to say, Cayman Brack is a place you can disappear fast. See any murder case getting solved here? Any informer caught informer will be the next unsolved case. Wow. F around with on a life, man. And then he does a little middle finger emoji. I'll tag the effing police themselves to show the community how much F's is giving. Well, Soka's here. So Soka is like, mm, he better go back to school and learn how to spell. Using the wrong giving. <laughs> and 
And he's so bright that he thought he was tagging RCIPS, but he couldn't even get that right. Oh, Cody, 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 Cody. Who, 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 who you is? Who your mama is? Who your daddy is? Because someone must have fallen down on the job of trying to raise you, son. Are you for real right now? You think it's cool to go on social media and threaten the good people of Cayman Brack because you got arrested, arrested for being a drug dealer? I find that when I read things like this, my good head takes me. These guys believe they're so bad. And you know what is so funny? Two things are going to happen, Cody. You end up in jail or you end up in a box. What kind of badass life is that? How many Fs are you going to give then when you're six feet under? I'm just curious. Brack community, please do not allow anyone in your community to think that they can scare you all into being complacent, ignoring the law, and not reporting, as they say, if you see something, say something. It's shocking and unbelievable that someone would try to, again, he never quite got it right, but he actually had the audacity of trying to tag the RCIPS in this. You see, this now is where I know something is gravely wrong with the community on Cayman Brack. How old is this Cody fella? Hmm? In his 20s? What's he going to do? Kill everybody on the Brack? The Brack community needs to take a stand against this kind of foolishness. Honestly, these guys think that they can scare you into being on the wrong side of the law, that they can scare you into not speaking up when something is wrong in your community, and you guys are going to sit back and allow this to happen, it's one of him and how many of you? Four or five dealers in the BRAC causing havoc for the entire BRAC community talking about they can't solve no murders. Well, you know why he can say something like that? Because poor Mitchie got ran over and killed huh? by people in Cayman Brack. And there's a story surrounding that, some allegations about drugs and he knew this and he knew that. And y'all have sat back and allowed Mitch's death to go unsolved. That is what gives people like Cody the balls to stand up talking foolishness like this. Which other unsolved murder in Cayman Brack is he talking about? The little child that went missing the other day? That you hear all these stories that supposedly the child was murdered? Even her own mother posting up stuff, but oh, somebody's going to pay? Well, who should be paying is you, honey child. You should be at the top of the list of people that's being paid, that's paying for this. Because you allowed a drug runner who has been arrested multiple times for drug distribution, possession, whatever, to be up in your house with your child. And now you're talking about somebody has murdered your child? Hmm. Sounds like to me, you're the one who need to be talking. Who murdered your child? If you believe that, why haven't you told the police that? Because according to the police, no one has provided them but one iota of evidence to say that this child was murdered. And all they see is that the child drowned, and that's the end of the story. Case soon closed. And there will be no justice for this child if, if something more did happen. Y'all ridiculous. You bring even evil into your household, and then you want to talk foolishness about somebody going to pay for this? How, how exactly are they going to pay for it? Y'all need to stop toying around with criminals and toying around with criminality. Yeah. So Cody seems to have, I'm trying to find this post again on social media because he then went as far as um, commenting on social media. His profile picture is him sitting down smoking a spliff. 
who who this who this boy family is? Y'all are proud of him. You know, to me, it is shocking that as Caymanians, we don't stand up against the Cody's of the world to say, son, I don't care who you are, you're going to learn to respect the rules of this community. Do, do his parents not care? Cousins don't care, aunts and uncles don't care, nobody don't care in the brack. Is that what I'm understanding is going on here? But he wasn't done. Hold on. More to come. He got he got some he got some nerves, man. He says, I don't give an F either, because not one of you can run up on me without six people taking you home. Wow. If all you effing coked out Fs that are 50 to 60 plus years old, uh, for the record, there's people in the brack who are a lot younger than that who are on cocaine. So I don't know what he's talking about, but anyway. Um, he says, it's your choice. <laughs> Drugs flood the place from the 70s to the late 90s. They all indulge, indulged and love it. Hence why the F they chose to do drugs. So F and go take them for, sell, for help since it's such an effing concern because nobody out here with a gun to people head telling them to go get high. So somehow that justifies his behavior. I'm confused. Then he writes another message. I wonder if you stupid MFs here on the brack that claim the island has a drug problem ever stop to think that it has more of a drug use problem than drug dealing. Okay. If demand isn't there, it wouldn't be any drugs. So take on a drugged out family members and friends to rehab. Stop effing reporting my home is a drug hub because as you can clearly effing see, we are not getting caught with drugs. And furthermore, I hope someone show Malcolm K this. So Malcolm K apparently is the RCAPS I think he's a superintendent or something there in the BRAC in charge of what's happening in the BRAC. Well, we've done you a favor, Cody. You wanted Malcolm to see it. Now we've ensured that all of the RCIPS has seen it, as well as all of the world. And everybody can sit back now and ask the question, what on earth is happening, Cayman BRAC? You were arrested on Sunday, son, <laughs> for a drug offense. What are you trying to say? They can arrest you for a drug offense, but didn't find any drugs? I'm confused. People reporting that your house is a drug house and you're saying that it's not? Well, then what were you arrested for? Because police sources have said that you were arrested for a drug-related offense and came in Brack on Sunday. So they didn't find any drugs, but they arrested you for drug offense anyway. This is a very bold situation. And I think it demonstrates some deep-seated issues of what is happening on Cayman Brack. Y'all need more than Jesus on the Brack. Because I think y'all get enough of your dose of Jesus every single Sunday and Saturday and in Bible schools and Bible worship during the rest of the week. What you're not getting is a dose of honesty. Where are the BRAC MPs? Are they seeing this stuff? Do they know that the good citizens of the BRAC are being targeted? They are being threatened into not talking to the police and talking to the authorities. They're being told that murders don't get solved on the BRAC. Y'all can't arrest and, and actually charge anyone for poor Mitchie being run down by a vehicle. You know why? Because the Brack has an underbelly of evil that nobody wants to talk about. Y'all want the truth? How can Mitchie get ran over? And everybody in the Brack seems to know who's involved, but nobody's in jail for it. And the alleged mother of who, supposedly who's involved was washing away the evidence, washing off the car. 
Y'all are some evil little bitches. I am sorry to say. What if, what if Mitch, it was your son, your uncle, your dad, you would want him gunned down, run down in the streets of Cayman Brack and no one ever held accountable for it. And then you're going to help your own child cover up the crime scene afterwards. Do you really think that any good will come to you or your children when you allow them to do stuff like this and you become part of the cover up? It's a wonder y'all can sleep at night, to be honest. Because I don't know how you do it. Your conscience should be burning a hole, a literal hole, into your heart and your minds for this kind of thing. It's horrific. And this is why enablers, we keep talking about them, whether it's political enablers, Miss Kmat enablers, Right? It's the same concept, folks. People who get away with murder are assaulting people because you help in the cover up. You're turning the blind eye. What do you think is going to be the future of those individuals and by extension, this country? No, sir. Damien. So there's no jobs over there. All work permits being approved. Caymanians being file 13. Oh, is is that what's wrong with Cody? He can't find a job. So he becomes an alleged drug runner and threatening people on social media. If you can't find a job in Cayman Brack, because I mean, I don't know how many jobs are out there. Come to Grand Cayman and do your best. The inability to find a job is not a reason to engage in illegal activity. You know what I find though? Most of these guys who claim that they can't find a job have zero skill set to begin with. What exactly would his job be? Well, what skills is a Cody Parchment bringing to the table? Did he finish school? What were his passes? What were his grades? What was he doing with his life? There's been a lot of Cayman Brackers folks who have accomplished a lot professionally. They have jobs and they're hardworking people. So what's the real issue in the BRAC? And whether you can find a job or not, that's not an excuse for criminality. Shogad, uh, oh, my sinuses this morning, says the community needs to stand up and deal harshly with the dealers who room their mongrel dogs freely selling. If the community comes together and harass, embarrass, and makes life so miserable for these dealers and their family members, then these mongrels can't live in peace. CYB, take a stand and make these dealers' lives so uncomfortable going after their families. Make it so that these dealers are like cockroaches and spray their asses every time you see them. This is the point exactly, Sean. The dealers are threatening the good citizens. When are the good citizens going to stand up and start protesting in the streets of Cayman Brack if you have to, and letting these dealers know, I don't know who you think you are. The entire Brack community cannot be held hostage because of one or two people. Where does the power lie? Well, the power lies in people who, who, um, well, the power doesn't lie, I should say, in people who remain silent when they see wrongdoing happening and occurring in their community. Soka says he's spelling the way he speaks. Um, That's different from not knowing how to spell, but the content is very disturbing and sad. Blair says, Instagram, the real way to be a gangster. Well, this is what they do, Blair, is they use social media to send out these messages and to threaten people. Now, I hope to God that the RCIPS intends to do something about this. I hope to God that when he gets to court for his drug charges, uh, that the magistrates actually see these messages and see this attitude. Because guess what? He's going to get a defense attorney at our dime. <laughs> Legal aid is going to pay for his defense. Huh? Yeah. And then what? Make sure DPP's office that the court 
sees this kind of behavior. This is ridiculous. Cody Parchment, this boy got some mouth. So here, here's what he said on social media. Sean says, as far as Mitchie goes, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. When you least expect it, your life shines no more. Waiting and worrying who and when it comes is what drives someone nuts. Hence the example here. Well, I tell you what, Mitchie and his family deserve justice. Somebody needs to be in jail for what happened to Mitchie. And the fact that the residents of the Brock seem to know the story, but yet no one can get, no one meaning the police, can get the evidence that is required to put these people behind bars is unbelievable. Like I said, if I had a prayer to give to the universe right now, it would be that any of you involved in this, either directly or involved in the cover-up, do not ever sleep a good life, a good night ever again. How can you do this to somebody? Vicky says, him a bad man behind social media. Why don't you go to the police station and tell them that? Well, he has sent a message, um, folks, to, uh, what's the man's name? Mr. K, there on the block. Uh, Mr. K, Malcolm K, <laughs> you've been tagged. RCIPS, you've been tagged. Can we show this young man who's actually in charge here? The ad says Juliana doesn't care. But when it comes to being a lesbian or gay person selling drugs, she would have been all over it, uh, have them arrested. Well, child, the poor gay people don't have, even have to do anything wrong for them to be all upset about it. Remember how she was sending the most um, feverish prayer during the whole LGBT thing? Oh, good Lord, pray that the parliament does the right thing. And oh, Jesus, bring down hell and damnation upon them. Oh, my God, holy God. You got people, children, child, mysteriously dead on the, on the rack. Uh, Mitchie, dead. Drugs rampant. Child abuse rampant. And I don't hear one single prayer about any of that. Oh, good Lord, let's, let, let's weed out the Cody's of Cayman Brack. How come you're not praying about that? Send that out in your community chat as a prayer. I'm just saying. Which, which, which sin is greater to you? People trying to live their own lives and do whatever they want in the privacy of their homes, be who they are, versus people who are destroying your community running drugs and then wants to blame the addict because they say it's the addict's fault. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Take the wheel. This is what he said. Over Hessel. Uh, let me enlarge this a little bit. So he gets in the comment section on the post that we put up and he says, Cayman Brack ain't getting no help. You effing right it ain't. We have drug addicts here that need rehab and their family members complaining on here that they should be ashamed. At, they should be ashamed and carry their mama to effing safe haven. They have plenty room in there without that user, they ain't no dealers. Always remember that instead of complaining, go get help people, really. This to me is, um, and, and three people actually have the audacity to like this. Who is this? Thomas Jackson, Dominique Martin, Mays, and Isabel McFarlane. This is like one of those questions. What, what came first? The drugs or... The dealer, the drug addict or the dealer? Which, which one do you think actually came first? Right? Well, in my mind, folks, <laughs> you've got to be joking. If you are a drug dealer, you can't sit back and say, well, I wouldn't have a job if nobody was an addict. Mm, this is what you call circular logic and thinking. This don't make no damn sense. If you weren't out there making drugs readily available in this community, importing drugs into this community, maybe those people with a drug addiction would have a much harder time getting their hands on anything and be forced to remain sober. You can't be part of the problem and then try to blame 
an addict or blame somebody else. That doesn't make any sense. That doesn't justify what it is that you're doing. And it's so funny because the man, he's not saying that he's not doing it. I mean, be very, very clear here. Nowhere does he say, I'm not doing this. He says, it's not my problem. Y'all need to deal with your drug addicts. Of course, we need to deal with the drug addicts. But this isn't a one avenue solution. We also need to deal with the people who are peddling drugs in our communities, such as yourself. H- how can you think that this is cool? Ta- trying to tag the RCIPS. Right? This is, this is, I was beyond disturbed, folks, when I saw these comments. Honestly, what on earth? Are you serious? And Cayman Brackers, y'all are going to sit back and allow this to happen? Miss Darlene says, pure little punks control the bracket seems. Bad parenting is sometimes a problem. Not sometimes, 99% of the time, bad parenting is the problem. All right, let me take a commercial break because as you can hear, my sinuses are ugh, killing me right now. Listen to this message, folks. The Fall Labor Force Survey is currently being conducted by the Economics and Statistics Office. The Labor Force Survey collects data on employed and unemployed persons. Train interviewers with ESO ID cards will visit randomly selected households in all districts. The interviewers will exercise appropriate COVID-19 protocols using personal protective equipment. The interviews are confidential in accordance with the Statistics Act. No individual data will be published or disclosed. Survey data are exempt from freedom of information. For more details, please call the ESO hotline at 516-3329. Wonderland Christmas trees are here. It's official. It's Cayman's most wonderful time of the year. Don't delay or all the elves will give the trees away. Stop by our Christmas tree lot to select from the finest balsam fir trees, starting at $100 for 5 to 6 feet. Christmas lot is located right next to Costulus in Governor Square. Selected from the best farms in Canada, your tree has been grown with love and care by all our elves for many years. Wonderland Christmas Trees is owned and operated by experienced elves with over 6 years of industry experience. Don't trust your Christmas tree needs to anyone else. And remember, for every tree you purchase, Wonderland Christmas Trees makes a donation to feed our future and Meals on Wheels. Visit wonderlandtrees.ky or find us on Facebook to place your order today christmas tree sales going on now don't delay wonderland christmas trees your best choice for christmas ho 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 merry christmas welcome back 936 2626 that's 936 bobble is the telephone number um have i lost my good sense this morning y'all need to tell me what what's going on in the brack The day that we allow criminals to intimidate people. (laughs) Wow. We see it in other places. There's certain neighborhoods in Honduras and Jamaica and apparently right here in the Cayman Islands now. That the criminals are apparently running the show. They're the ones who are dictating what's happening. And people are living in fear. And people are afraid to speak out. And to become witnesses, the police are always calling on good people to step up to the plate, provide witness statements. We see a police officer right now having been charged and in police custody for trying to intimidate a witness in a murder case. And as a result of his actions, that witness did not feel comfortable coming forward until a year later, an entire year later before she would come forward and talk to the police. And to be honest, it's not unheard of that she might have never spoken to the police. And that would have been another unsolved murder. We cannot tolerate any individual who tries to intimidate a witness. And in fact, this now is where our legislators need to pay attention. This perverting the course of justice, interfering with witnesses, What kind of sentence does that get? Let me see if I can find out real quick. Because in my estimation, 
the Pat government needs to go back to the drawing board and make that the equivalent of almost a capital offense. In other words, you're going to jail for at least 10 years. Think twice then about intimidating people. Huh? Let me find out. Because that should be a very, very serious offense. You need to start throwing the books at people. This person says, this is for your eyes only. Don't read aloud. <laughs> okay. I'm going to give you some names to put out. Oh, yeah. Naming all the drug runners. Oh, talking about how the politicians are connected to some of the drug runners. The other politician can't say nothing because they got so much dirt on him or her. Let's leave it wide open. <laughs> drug dealers. Yep. I've heard those names. I've heard those names. Heard both of those names. Yes. And I don't even know who these people is. Yep. That lady who overdosed is so-and-so's niece, a politician. Don't hear nothing about it. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we spoke on it. Yep. Yep. And yep. Kim and Brockers, really, y'all need to stand up. This person says, I ask why people don't utilize Crime Stoppers Anonymous tips. And they said, no one can convince them it's really anonymous. So they won't do it. But I do think that it would be good if you could contact Crime Stoppers and ask them to put up a significant monetary payout for tips that lead to an arrest of any drug activity in the BRAC, and especially for the murder of that baby that we still can't hear anything about. Well, I think the police need to go on record and, tell, and say what they have said to me, which is there is no murder case to investigate, according to them. When there's no justice, there will always be crime and death. Like these guys guys boldly say, no murder, no murder in Cayman Brack has ever been solved. So they feel confident in posting such death threats against anyone who snitches on them. It's truly unbelievable uh, in the Cayman Islands. Who's, who's Danny? So there's another post that these guys put up. And again, I really hope the police um, are on top of, of this situation. Here's another one that says, Every, everyone want to laugh at Danny, who I don't know who Danny is, until he blew a hole the size of Squat's quarry through your head, keep smirking, feel a 380 ACP rip through your skull. You know what, man willing, do you? Don't say I didn't give you the heads up. Wow. Who, who's Danny in the Brock? So these guys are able to make these um, blatant threats. And this is, this is okay. This other person says, um, this is the other big murder in the Brock that has gone unsolved, but everyone knows her man ran her over. But he always been protected by Lodge Brothers is the belief. Cold case detectives reopen suspicious fatal road collision. So on the BRAC, they just run you over with a car. They drag your body down the street. And that's how, um, that's how they kill you. Because this is the cold case death of mother of seven, Ava Glee Ebanks, in a 1997 crash. So it looks like in the rack, the preferred method of murder is to just run you over in the road. And that seems to work really well. Have you go missing as a toddler into the wee hours of the morning? What the hell? I've, I've heard about this, um, this cold case as well. Um, this, this lady's, uh, I think I know a few of her daughters. She had seven children. She's been left, you know, her children have been left with this hole in their lives because they say that her 
man or boyfriend or whoever he was at the time actually dragged her and um and killed her wow hmm. unbelievable so we have two road Suspicious road deaths, road fatalities, where people get ran over and they can't be solved makes the gangsters think that there's no unsolved, that there's no solved murders on the block. Mm, I wouldn't quite say that. I mean, I think they're, they're stretching it a little bit. No, sir. This person says, good morning. Don't forget that Juliana O'Connor Connolly is the McKeever of the Brack. I need to say no more. Don't forget the number one preacher. Oh. Hmm. Unbelievable. Someone says, no one seems to be upset that um, our own Caymanians are importing drugs and guns into the island and condoning these acts as if nothing is wrong. Then they get upset when people die because of products imported. Even if they have concerns uh, with call the police, use the Crime Stoppers tip line. If anonymous and unanswered in the US, so even if the info can be used as evidence in court, or it can't be used as evidence in court, at least it can assist in the recovery of firearms and ammunition. I think that there needs to be more done to promote Crime Stoppers. Number one, so that um, people can understand precisely how Crime Stoppers works, where it's routed to, et cetera. You know, it's it's just a a question of or a matter of if people don't understand something, they are more likely to buy into all these rumors and innuendos and be fearful of these so-called criminals. How many criminals do y'all have in the BRAC? The good citizens of Cayman BRAC outnumber the criminals, and you have to be prepared to utilize and flex your power. Yeah. That's what needs to happen. But as usual, when there's no political will to support the right thing, because y'all are hiding under long skirts and frock tails and incapable of speaking the truth because you have family members who are running drugs, Mm-hmm. We hear the stories, my love. It can't go so. You have to speak up. Don't matter if it's your brother. If it's your daddy. If it's your uncle. If it's your cousin. You are allowing a handful of people to ruin the black community. What was seen as. Cayman Brock and, and Little Cayman, a last safe haven. People want to go there to retire, to get away from the hustle and the bustle of Grand Cayman. The Brock is supposed to be a sleepy little village. No major crime, no unsolved murders. No drug runners, no drug peddling, no crackheads roaming the streets. Y'all might need that guy from um, the Philippines to come here and run the place for a little bit. You know what he does with drug dealers? A death sentence. That's what he does for you. He executes you. I bet you y'all wouldn't go up in there and be running off of the mouth. Mm -mm -mm. 
Unbelievable. Strong will. Good morning. So Sandy, is this Cody Bowen? He's family to the Godfrey family. No, his name is Cody Parchment. Let's get a good look at Cody here, folks. Um, since he's big and bold, obviously he don't care. So everybody in the BRAC now, if you own a home in the BRAC, uh, you're a visitor there, there's Cody. Smoking Kajan, his profile picture and living his best life um, possible and posting this stuff on social media. Carmely says, morning from Miami. Morning, Miss Sue. Strong will says, Sandy, you're spicy this morning. You're killing me. You have a wonderful day. Morning, Khalees. Morning to Debbie. Damien says, 10 years. A pedo doesn't even get that sentence. Well, we need to change a few sentences around here. Him or her, we have two politicians in Cayman Brack, honey child. Two of them live there. Moses Kirkernel and Juliana O'Connor Conley, both who have largely checked out. You don't hear nothing from them until election time and you brackers keep electing them. Well, I can see why you don't believe that you have much of a choice. It's ridiculous. Curtis is here. Curtis says, you're hot this morning. Well, the truth is the truth is the truth. RCIPS, y'all need to send some strong contingent of people to the BRAC. The fact that these guys feel so comfortable tagging the RCIPS, calling out Malcolm, right? In a post shows that number one, they have no respect for the RCIPS and Cayman BRAC, and they certainly have no fear of anything um, from the police either in Cayman Brat. That is a sad indictment, folks. Really, really, really sad. Huh? Get it together. If you need to spruce up pat patrols on the BRAC, then you need to do so. Government, find out how your workers on the streets your road workers are being used to help to transport and get drugs out there to people. The BRAC has one friggin' street. How hard can it be? Put these guys under 24 seven surveillance. Hmm? Use drones, do whatever you need to do. Government will free up the budget, eradicate the drug dealers from Cayman Brack. Contrary to what Cody believes, you eradicate the drug dealers, the addicts might then be forced to get help because they're not going to be able to find any drugs. And they're out there snitching on the good people of Cayman Brack to try to get drugs and support their drug habit. You can't be a drug dealer and blame your clients for the ones who have the problem. Hmm? That don't make no sense. Okay, Manions, do better. Stop finding excuses to accept this kind of behavior. Can we please get some decent people running for the next election in Cayman Brack? Are you trying to tell me there's nobody who can stand for election in Cayman Brack that can take out these two who are, who've been checked out for years and not doing anything? Good morning, caller. Oh, how are you doing? Not bad. How are you? You're one in a million. You ever hear that song by Larry Graham? I'm, I'm not sure. I might have to go Google it. <laughs> You're one in a million. Mm, mm, mm. What a mess. <laughs> anyway... The president you're thinking of in Philippines is his name is Duterte. Yes, I mean he's crazy. Okay. Don't get me wrong, because he'll he'll execute you for just about anything. But the point no, no, not anything. Well, he, dr drug dealers when for I, sure he executes. When, but no, when I went there, I reached the airport. Uh -huh. I saw on the wall, on the wall it says, "If you're caught importing drugs, mm -hmm. they." You'll be executed. Yeah. 
I mean, sometimes you have to take a real no nonsense approach. Now, you know, um, I'm I'm not necessarily saying because I guess we'd have no young men left in Cayman Brack and quite a few here gone from Grand Cayman. But you know what? We need to start. If you're peddling in drugs, there should be a minimum sentence for that sort of thing. Send you to jail for 10 years. Just like we have one for gun offenses, drugs and guns go hand in hand. Minimum sentence of 10 years for drugs. No questions asked. If you're found as a dealer, you're going to jail for 10 years. <laughs> you know, get programs for, for the people who are on drugs. Although you can have all the programs in the world. If they don't want the help, they don't want the help. Like I said a couple of days ago, Quincy was in a really good professional program in Jamaica and they kicked him out of the program because he's there getting crack and doing crack in his room. Some people cannot be helped. And the only thing that's going to sober them up is a jail cell. So if you keep him in jail for five years and that helps him to be sober, well, it is what it is. Maybe it's time to put some addicts who are ref refusing treatment opportunities in jail as well. I mean, for a substantial amount of time. But then no one observing. Hmm. It's it ridiculous. Should it should be on the observation. Yeah. Um, somebody says that maybe we need patrols. Uh, Damien, Coast Guard base needs to be on Little Cayman with a dock, fuel, and helicopter and 24-hour patrols. Um, oh, gosh. I'm not sure if the caller's call got disconnected or he meant to hang out. But, you know, the, the thing about it as well, folks, is we need to accept and take responsibility for the fact that it is our people who are allowing this to happen and who are destroying. Did, did Alexa just say to me? Oh, that was Siri saying, I know. <laughs> Even Siri is agreeing with me, although I wasn't talking to her. She says, I know. <laughs> Well, I'm glad you know, honey, Shell, because it's our people who are ultimately destroying our own country. Every drug boat that we have that come into this country, those are people who have connections. I don't care where they're coming from, but we know they're coming from Jamaica. But those are people who have connections to people here in Cayman who are taking, you know, possession of the drugs and the guns. They don't come here as total strangers. They come here as part of a criminal enterprise. They know what's going on. This is not how, well, let me, let me be very clear. Cody has a point about how for many years we have had from the eighties, seventies, maybe even we've had a drug problem that a lot of us were not willing to admit. Some high society people right now were drug runners back in the day, bringing in airplanes full of money by the bag full. Now they're business people. But Cody, a lot has changed since those times. The drug world of the 70s and 80s is in the drug world of today. So you're not going to end up a businessman, a legitimate businessman with a shipping company and a politician, all these other things. Your life is going to be limited to jail or street violence. So you are right about the historical context of what we have created here, but times have also changed. So that gangster mentality in this day and age isn't gonna get you very far. Live says, I just Googled the Philippines airport drug warning signage, OMG, it is true. <laughs> well, you know what? It's so funny because our CBC and, pat and patrol, you know, we don't have up any signage like that. Not even death, but we don't have any anti-drug signage at all in our airport. Everything is about friggin' rum cakes, expensive properties, one or two telecom signs. That's because we don't want to believe that we have any criminals or any drugs. Stick, stick up the signage at our airport too. What happened to the drug dogs? You don't hardly see them out anymore. I mean, I haven't traveled a lot since COVID, but... There was a time that you would see them roaming the airport, trying to sniff out people. I mean, I know the RCIPS killed one. Lord Jesus, shame on them. But do we not have any more? Where are they? Cayman Brack 
airport should have a drug dog station there 24 7 every flight the brack not that big why can't we patrol the shores of the brack how are the drugs getting into cayman brack now i hear there's some owen island or some island between little cayman and cayman brack and apparently um they're using that as a transport point where they actually hide it in the bushes Y'all need to get it together now. Mm, mm, mm. All right, folks, let's switch gears. Uh, somebody else sent me something about Singapore. They said Singapore does not play. Warning, death for drug traffickers under Singapore law. <laughs> I mean, if we're not going to do death, can we at least do a minimum of 10 years for all drug traffickers, just like we have for gun possession? Somebody just sent this warning. It says, do not remove this portion from your passport or travel document. You're required to surrender this portion to the immigration officer at the checkpoint at the time of your departure. So this is what they put in your passport when they stamp you as a visitor. Right under that visitor stamp, warning, death for drug traffickers under Singapore law. Huh? We need to put a stamp there. Change the law, warning, 10 year minimum sentence for drug traffickers under Cayman law. Let's get it together now. All right, folks, the Cayman Islands is built on a history of hardworking individuals. Yes, we've always had certain criminal elements around the place, but the vast majority of Caymanians have been hardworking people who went off to sea, who made sacrifices. The mother stayed here. They worked. They earned an honest living. And as part of our Cayman Voices series today, now I see over 328 of you in the live stream. I don't want to see that number go down one bit. Listen carefully to what I'm about to tell you. I'm here talking about criminals and the criminal element in Cayman Brack, and y'all are very, very interested. That's good. I want you to be interested because we have to stomp that bullshit out. But when we highlight the good people of this country, as part of this Cayman Voices series, the people who have worked hard, who have sacrificed, who have raised good children and grandchildren, and who did not put up with any foolishness. Yeah? When we highlight those individuals, y'all need to stay tuned for that story as well. Caymanians talking about Oh, poverty and hard times. Y'all don't know what poverty and hard times is. Y'all have had life too friggin' easy. Right? Oh, things so expensive in the brag. People can't get jobs. Try and hush your mouth. Listen and educate yourselves. There was a time when there was no industry here for people to get jobs. They had to leave this country, go out to sea in perilous conditions to be able to send home a couple shillings back to their family members. You don't know your story so you can get up and say all kind of foolishness when you're ready. I want you to listen to this interview from Mr. Wenzel. The man witnessed a murder right in front of his eyes in the States. This is what our Caymanian men were subjected to. They were going overseas. They saw all sorts of stuff. And you know what? They pulled up their big men pants and got on with the business of doing the right thing. Poverty is no excuse. 
unemployment is no excuse. They were prepared to sweep the streets. They were prepared to work in conditions that was giving them lung cancer and lung diseases and whatever else. Y'all don't know the struggle of our forefathers. That's part of the problem. We have been raised by a generation of parents who were so busy trying to spoil their children that they didn't get the memo. That you don't give, you don't have to give your child material things or everything that they want. You teach them good values, the value of hard work. Huh? Imagine how our children would be if they were told at Christmas time, there are no toys to be had. You had to make your own toys, go make a gig. And that's what you got for Christmas. And you had to try and share that between four or five siblings. That's one of the reasons why to me, the Cayman Voices series is so important because we need to take a step back and look at the history of our people to really know from whence we have come. Because where are we going is questionable a lot of times. But we're off the rails because we don't know where we came from. We don't know our people. We don't know the stories. Ms. Darlene says, I wish people would stop talking about there are no jobs in the Bracken Grand Cayman. Richard said, as some of these Cayman and seamen did not survive. That's right. Some die by accidents and ships and shore, all while sending home their money to their families. Yes, some died right off the brack. There was a ship that exploded that killed, um, I forget what their names would have been, but anyway, related to the Tomlinson family. Killed one of their fathers. That was the husband. The, the wife stood there and saw the entire boat explode with her husband killed on it and dead. Okay, my nids have gotten really soft. Because you know what? That woman had to continue for the sake of her children. She had to find herself another husband, someone to, that could be a breadwinner and support the family. I want to thank the good people of the Cayman Islands who have stepped up to the plate and participating in this interview series. And I also want to um, thank the DART organization because, you know, like I said, I've had this idea for several years. And of course, it takes money to do these things. <laughs> There's a professional videographer. He has to get paid. There's equipment that's involved. There's, you know. So I appreciate them stepping up to the plate and being willing to sponsor this segment so that we can get the interviews completed and we can get them done. I take time out of my weekends to, or any time that the elderly are available, but normally it's weekends because family members, you know, have to assist. away from my family and other things that I could be doing to sit down and do these interviews. This is important. This collection of our history, I cannot stress to you how important it is. Without any further ado, folks, sit back. Live says that we should be celebrating our seamen and stop celebrating this Pirates Week rubbish. Let me say something live. I'm glad you said that because that has reminded me. Speaking of celebrating our seamen, this Cayman, what the heck is it called again? Celebrate Cayman Department, CelebrateCayman.ky. They claim that they're looking for seamen to come and, and complete this form to um, be added to the seafarers registry. All right, now I have to call out government a little bit here. There's something wrong with y'all. Slackness comes in all shapes and sizes. This Celebrate Cayman, over two years ago, we had the National Heroes Day. And because of COVID restrictions, when the seafarers were honored, remember we had we renamed Seafarers Day and we did this and that and blah, 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 under the progressives government. And as a result of that, they couldn't have like the full event. So they claimed that, oh, they were going to have a, another event 
as restrictions were lifted. And these seafarers, over 500 of them would get their certificates. Well, Jesus, peace. Guess what? That hasn't happened. These good men, these seafarers who made immense sacrifices for this country still don't have their bloody certificates. In this Celebrate Cayman department, which is run by Mr. Um, what his name is Alfonso, right? Alfonso, step up to the plate and explain yourself. And it falls under the cabinet office. So Mr. Um, what his name is? Sam Rose, step up to the plate and explain yourself, please. How can people not be performing in the civil service and still have a job? And need I might remind you all how much money Alfonso is making? As far as I'm concerned, this is a matter of public record. Hold on here now. Let's go back to the CMR website because you know we've been outing him for a minute. Poor Alfonso was lying to his mommy about how much money he was making because he didn't want to contribute too much to help them support her. So apparently, the streets tell me Mm, mm, mm. And trust me when I tell you the streets can talk. That when I posted this story about the premier's former PA, premier being Premier Alden McLaughlin, right? Getting a hardship allowance and a 40% increase in salary in 2021, making over $12,000 per month as a political assistant. Hardship allowance. Y'all know something wrong around here. Well, the documentation that I received from an anonymous source happened to include said salary of Mr. Alfonso Wright. Well, lo and behold, everybody was shocked. How much Alfonso is making again? Anyway, I have to look at this document a little bit closer. But everybody was shocked to see that Alfonso was making all this money. Most of all, his own family. See him down here? What, how much that is? Over, is that over $8,000? Hold on. Um, cost center allowance, $126,915. Cost center deductions. Anyway, oh yes, $8,000. I'm trying to look at it closely. 8055 looks like. Hold on. Plus getting a car allowance and all this other kind of stuff. Yeah. Making a decent government salary. Benefits and the works. And you mean to tell me, sir, that for that kind of money, pension, contributions, car upkeep and all kind of foolishness you could not have ensured that our seamen received their certificate some two years later some of these men have since died waiting on a certificate from government what slackness is this huh now they come out i had to say to somebody yesterday I think they have lost the information because this level of incompetence, while it's not unheard of in government, still remains a bit unusual. Explain to me why you're now coming out asking these seamen to register. Why? Why? When you just had over 500 people nominated seamen, for certificates. If you wanted a registry, you could have pulled it together from that. Slackness, I tell you. If you wanted a registry, go to the Siemens Association. They have all the information there. Why this pedantic exercise of, oh, we need you to re-register all over again. That's because we believe in reinventing the wheel. 
when you're being paid $8,000 of the people's money every single month to do what? What the hell is Celebrate Cayman doing? Hmm? Two years ago, he also claimed that he was going to be conducting interviews with C-Men and this and that. Yeah, hold your breath for that. That's soon come. And I only remember it because when I was there at that event, I said, oh, but that's the same idea that we've had for a minute now. Ideas are a dime a dozen. It's about delivery. But when you work for the government, when you work for the people of the Cayman Islands, you should be delivering on these so-called promises. Again, Sam Rose is in charge of this Celebrate Cayman office that falls under him, falls under the premier's office, and I'm sad to say, but who is keeping tabs on the actual deliverables that this office is involved in? In other words, what are they getting done? Two years later, all these seamen don't have a certificate in their hand. Some have passed on and died. Some now have Alzheimer's from two years ago and they can't even remember. Somebody said to me, Sandy, I would love my father to be able to get his certificate before he dies. I know of a young man who himself got a certificate for something else and he is not even telling his father that he was honored by this country as a national hero because he don't want his father to feel bad that he got a low certificate and the one that was promised to the father from two years ago, he can't get all now. Hmm. Yet, y'all have people suspended from government and promising them you would complete the investigation within a month. And then months later, the investigation has not moved one step forward yet. You've not interviewed people to verify anything that has happened. This is not a world-class civil service. France, you know I know you does your best, honey chill. But sometimes your best just not good enough. You need to put some of these people foot to the fire and, and maybe some of them don't need a job. They need to be fired. Because what exactly are they doing? What does Celebrate Cayman do? I want to see in the past two years exactly what they have accomplished. You know what they've accomplished? They're over there stepping on the corns and the toes of the protocol office, trying to host and organize certain events because there's no clear delineation between Celebrate Cayman, which was created for the, um, what was it? The 600 years or whatever the heck it was at a time celebration, right? That was created. And basically the progressives wanted to keep Alfonso in a job after he got voted out of office. And so they have just kept this Celebrate Cayman office going to keep this man employed. Now, do not get me wrong. This was to commensurate the 60 years of the Cayman Islands coat of arms. Don't get me wrong. He's a Caymanian and all Caymanians, if possible, should have a job. But you do not have a job for years where nobody can't even see what the hell it is that you're doing. What year was this Celebrate came on that we did? How many years ago that was? Four or five years? When did we celebrate our 60 years of our coat of arms? Mm, mm, mm. I mean, truly, this is an embarrassment. Anyway, I needed to call them out. Thank you live for reminding me to do so. Yeah, they need to do better. What's that? Celebrate, came on. Huh. Oh, mess. I don't know, boy. Anyway, please, folks, um, hardship allowances, Cameron. Cameron, you need to go read the story. Re tell you more. You must have missed it. Please go and read the story. It is a shocking story. And you know what the progressive government response was to the story? They didn't explain any of it. Their response was, we need to find who released these paid documents to CMR. That was their whole remit. Let's investigate it. Yeah, that's what they were business with while they're traveling all over the damn place, wasting the people money. 
anyway. Um, I would like to thank the family members of Mr. Wenzel Burlington for allowing us to have the pleasure, yes, of interviewing him because it really was a pleasure. Please sit back, folks. Get your second cup of coffee. Don't turn off the radio. Beg for a little bit of overtime. Listen to this interview and y'all have a blessed day. And we'll be back tomorrow morning at 7.30, God's willing, with some more truth telling. Cayman Voices was a dream that I had for several years now. It's about taking the power of storytelling to embrace our own collective history as a people. Through our individual stories, we're able to see the common thread that binds us together as one. One person's personal journey has become our collective culture, heritage, and history. This series will show people from all walks of life sitting down with me as the host and going through their life journey. Sometimes there are unknown elements of their lives, but ultimately we're gonna walk away having learned something new with every person that we sit down with. I guess I would explain it as an exploration of our story. I'm naturally curious about people and their lives so Cayman Voices is exciting and allows me to capture this for everyone to enjoy. We are seeking out Caymanians, multi-generational, as well as some who have moved here to, you know, uproot their entire lives and to make this their home. This dream would not be possible without some sponsorship. And so I'd like to thank the DART organization for stepping up to the plate uh, to ensure that we're able to deliver regular monthly content for our viewers to enjoy. So sit back, kick up your feet, turn up the radio, relax, and listen to K-Man Voices. So we're here for another edition of Cayman Voices, and we've got Mr. Wenzel Burlington with us this afternoon from the beautiful district of West Bay. Good day, sir. How are you? Fine, thank you. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to speak with us. Um, of course, we're doing this series uh, because Cayman culture and heritage is so important, but sometimes we feel like we're losing a little bit of it every day, yeah. and it's just so amazing to have people like yourself who still carry um, the memories and the stories in your in your brain, right? Yeah. So we're gonna pick your brain a little bit today. Um, tell us, sir, how old are you? 87. You're 87 years old. Yeah. And I imagine in the past 87 years, you've seen a lot of changes. A lot of changes. It would be fair to say. Yeah. Yes. What are some of your earliest memories? Are you from the district of West Bay originally, like your parents? Yeah, yeah, from West Bay, Mount Pleasant. From Mount Pleasant. Yes. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about some of your earlier memories and who who were your parents? Pardon me. Your parents. Who were your parents? Uh, Lilith, Lilith Ebanks and Roy Ebanks. Okay, and they grew up in West Bay as well. Yeah, they grew up in West Bay. Yes. What would be, um, if I ask you to describe your childhood, how would you describe it for me? Um, I would describe it to be very good. Mm -hmm. uh, we, we used to, uh, well, we had to make our own toys, but we used to have a lot of games. Mm -hmm. We used to do a lot of fishing. And uh, especially on the weekend, because we went to school from from uh, seven, eight, eight o'clock in the morning mm -hmm. till sometime five. Oh wow! It, yes, we used to. Uh, we didn't have no 
theaters and their movie theaters. Uh -huh. No, no, uh, nothing. We had to make our own toys and we used to have a lot of fun. Yeah. So school from eight to five, that sounds like a very long day. Yeah. At school. Where, where was your school located? Uh, in very near to the Boston Lake Cemetery. Mm hmm Okay. And it was just a little schoolhouse? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Right. And what did you guys do all day? That's <laughs> like I said, eight to five sounds like a full work day. What, what did you guys do in school? Well, we learned a lot of a Bible. She, yes. And uh, regular school work, spelling, mm -hmm. arithmetic, mm -hmm. and stuff like that. Okay. Uh, writing. Mm -hmm. And how old were you then? How far did you go Se up to school? Seven to 16. Until you were 16. Yeah. Yes. Very good. What would you describe um, your household like? Would you say you guys were poor? Were you middle class? Like, what did you think of your childhood? I would say poor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What kind of work did your parents do? Uh, well, my father went to sea for a while, mm -hmm. and he did uh, a lot of uh, agriculture. Right, farming and stuff farming like that. Farming and stuff like that. Okay. And your mom would have been a homemaker? Yes. Right. Okay. And did you have a lot of sisters and brothers? I had one brother and three sisters. Okay. Beautiful. When you said that you had to make your own toys, tell us a little bit about what that was like. Kites. Yes. They go kites. We call them gigs by the top. Yes. Uh, uh, Any little cars or anything like that? Yeah, bicycles. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, good. All right. So after you um, finished school then at the age of 16, what would have been your prospects for employment? What did you do then for work? I, I went to a mosquito key for turtle fishing. For turtle fishing? Yes. Wow. Okay. And you mentioned that as a hobby, you guys would fish on the weekends? Yeah. Did you make any money off of that no, as well? No, no, no that no was money. just for fun. Yeah. Yeah, so Mosquito Key. So tell us a little bit about Mosquito Key. Mosquito Key is in the um, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. uh, Nicaragua. And we had a turtle net about 40 feet long mm. and four feet deep. Wow. And we used to set the nets near near a rock, a big rock. That's where the turtle go down mm -hmm. and hook their fins on the rock mm. and stay there till they want the need need to uh, take a breath. Mm -hmm. And the the fishermen knew where to put that net so it would swing over the rock and when the turtle come up to breathe mm -hmm. their fins get hooked in the net and in the morning then they go take them out. Wow, that's amazing. And these turtles are being caught for food? And we, uh, yes. and we sell we used to sell them to Marin uh -huh. and Dr. Roy. Okay, right. And of course, I'm sure back in those days, um, turtle meat would have been a staple dish for sure. Yeah, yeah. And they came out in diet. Yeah. Right. 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 So how long did you do that for? Uh, I made two trips, six months, uh, four months and six months. Mm-hmm. Hmm. 
And when I when I came home off the second trip, I went to Saunders Island. Mm -hmm. And I caught a got a ship there sailing out of Tampa and the, and uh, Costa Rica. A right. banana boat. Okay. Uh, and where where's Swan Island? Where is that one? Pardon me? Where where's Swan Island? Swan Island. Yeah, whereabouts is that? That's close to Nicaragua as well? Is that more off off of Honduras? Yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Very good. So now when we're talking about a ship, we're talking about one of the big tankers? No, no. No, no, no. No. This was a banana boat. Oh, okay. Going to Costa Rica to get uh, bananas, take up the Tampa. Oh. And, and, and sell them. We didn't sell them, we just delivered them mm -hmm. to, uh, to Tampa mm -hmm. Banana Company. Right. Okay, so this would have been then a second job for you, basically. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Right. And how long did you do that job for? For 13 months. Wow. So you made a lot of trips back and forth. Oh, yeah. We had... Uh, and we got caught in one hurricane. Oh, really? The trip. And that, cause the banana boat wasn't all that big. Right. And, but we made it, but, but if it were really rough. That must have been pretty scary. Yeah. Yeah. So tell us a little bit about, do you remember which hurricane that was? No. No, you don't remember which one. <laughs> but uh, that must have been... You know, you were still a pretty young man at the time. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. And that would have been your first hurricane yeah. that you experienced, especially at sea. Yeah. Yeah. But you survived it, <laughs> thankfully. Um, I said you survived it okay. Yeah. We made it all right. Yes. Uh, we was in it about three, four days. Wow. But uh, we made it all right. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. So the banana market, I guess, then was um, a good business to be in. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. A lot of banana boats. Some went to Belize, some went to uh, Costa Rica, Nicaragua. Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, sometimes we go to different ports. Mm -hmm. OK. And then um, you did that for 13 months. You kind of, did you grow tired of that or did you decide well, that wasn't really? I got a job on another banana boat. They, okay. They were paying more. Okay. The wages were bad. Right. And uh, that ship used to go to, uh, Costa Rica. Ah. Wow. So that would go from Swan Island to Costa Rica? No, to no. Tampa. To Tampa. Okay, so and that was the route. Tampa to Costa Rica. Yes. Back and forth. Okay, I see. Right. And how long did you then stay with that company? The second company? Mm -hmm. Uh A year, I'll be 15 months. About 15 months, yeah. yeah. And as a young man, how much money would you say you were making off of these, like for the week or the month? What was the average pay? $50 a month, wow. US. And that was considered good money? It was yeah. okay money? Yeah, uh, the second, the second sh ship for paying a little more. Mm -hmm. It's probably was $75. Okay. Yep. And what would you do with that money? Would you just send that home to your parents? Yes. Yeah. 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 To help out the family and right. stuff like that. Right. And that's how things were in those days. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. 
And then you continued on um, after those 15 months. What what was next for uh, your voyage? Havana on a, uh, a ship going to uh, Costa Rica mm -hmm. to deliver uh, another ship. Mm -hmm. uh, and, but she went on dry, had to go on dry dock. Mm. And they didn't, the after they came out of dry dock, they didn't have the money to pay for the dry dock, so mm. they impounded her. Oh, wow. And she couldn't sail. Okay. So I stayed on her, uh, I believe, for four months. Oh, wow. And they didn't, she couldn't sail, and the, uh, three mm. months ago. Mm -hmm. And the uh, immigration wouldn't give me no more time because we could only get 29 days at those days. Mm -hmm. And uh, the immigration told me, you say Burlington? Mm -hmm. This is the third time you come here without the ship of the Imbumana. Okay. So this is the third time you came uh -huh. to this office put that Romana in your mug. <laughs> but he said, this office is, this office is closed Saturday and Sunday. Uh-huh. And don't you come back here Monday morning. Oh, boy. So I had to hurry and get ready. And uh, I'm going uh, two years and three months. Mm -hmm. And uh, I came home. Right. I went, went to Miami. Okay. And, had, and caught the laxa, laxa. Mm hmm. And I came back, came home. Mm hmm. Right. And then what, what, when you came home, obviously a few years, it had been a few years that you were away. Did you start to even notice changes back then? Or oh, yes. things were starting to change a yes. little bit? What uh, year would we have been talking about roughly? What year was this? 50, 53. About 1953. 53, 54. Yeah. Okay. So you came back home. Um, what was the plan then after you returned home? Well, when I came home, the national bulk were coming into Cayman. Oh, we've heard a lot about them. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, it was shipping with goods, so mm -hmm. I got, I went to New York. I know they, they took us to New, New York. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I sailed for them, I believe it was 10 years. Wow, yes. You had to stay. 12 months. Mm -hmm. That was the minimum time yeah. you could stay. Yeah. And uh, my first trip I stayed uh, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. And I keep going up. Um, then uh, Caymanians had privilege of filing for our uh, Cayman star, uh, U.S. Oh, wow. Uh, okay. So uh, you could get residency? Yeah. Yeah. That's amazing. That's good. So did you do that then? I did that and mm -hmm. I, I got I got my uh, resident. Mm-hmm. You had it. You had to uh, have resident for for uh, five years before you could file for citizenship. Right. But uh, meanwhile, I I uh, I sailed when I when I stopped sailing for National Book, mm -hmm. I came home and I formed the company for myself. Mm -hmm. um, Burlington Repairs with a repair plumbing company. 
Okay. Now let me ask you a little bit about National Bulk. What sort of um, goods were they transporting? Because they were obviously a very big company, big That's shipping a company. Big company. Yes. Had the biggest ships in the world. They made. Wow. And uh, I made a lot of trips to Europe. Mm-hmm. Taking uh, coal. Okay. Rotterdam, Amsterdam, Germany, Spain. Uh, mm -hmm. They were the three most important mm -hmm. companies. Uh, um, Countries that you went yeah. to, yes. Very nice. So you got to see the world. Yes. Yeah. Went all over the world. Went the Persian Gulf. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, um, Germany, Spain, uh, a lot of places. A lot of places. <laughs> yes. And what did you do on the ship? Because um, I was, uh, but I started a vapor and I worked myself up to second engineer. Okay. And what did a wiper do? A wiper done the cleaning. Oh, okay. I see. And the painting. Yes. Okay. Yeah. And when you were on these ships, um, we've heard a lot of, you know, Caymanian men say that they got contracts with National Bulk Carrier. You would have seen other Caymanians on oh, the yeah. ships as well. Yeah. Yeah. So you had a little bit of Friends away from home. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, very good. All right, so a seaman for 10, ten years on, on the bigger ships. Yeah. Getting to sea and travel. Um, at this time, did you get married? Did you start a family? No, uh, I got married now. Uh, that's what year, 1960. Yeah, so you waited until your seafaring days were over. Basically. Just, just about, yeah. Yes. yeah. Okay. So you said you came back home and um, you started a plumbing company. Yeah. So somehow you got the the entrepreneurial spirit while right. you were sailing the right. high seas. Yeah. Yeah. Where do you think that idea came from? But, uh, from mostly national book. Yeah. Your yeah. experience there. Okay. Now, you mentioned your parents had the last name Ebanks. I'm kind of curious as to where Burlington came from. Oh, all right. Yes. <laughs> Burlington was my second name. Oh, okay. And there were so many Ebankses. Ah. How about the Ebanks? Right. There were so many Ebanks in Salem for National Book mm -hmm. that there was a lot of confusion. Right. Sometimes I'll get five, six uh, letters mm -hmm. from me back. Two of them might have been mine. Mm. Uh, yes. So I, I got tired uh, when I came <laughs> home. I uh -huh. went to the government office and uh, got uh, changed my name with a D Dole. Right. And I dropped the name Ebanks and took mm -hmm. Burlington from his last name. For your name. last name. Okay. Very interesting. So we're talking a little bit about this, how you came about changing your name. Um, and I understand that you had some memorable experiences with Caymanians uh, while you were at sea. Right, so I heard a story about you and, and um, maybe a cousin or a relative going out one evening to the bar and he was, he thought he was the, the big guy in town and you kind of gave him a little bit of scare. Do you remember that story? We just talking about? Huh? We just, we just talking about? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so lots of, lots of memories. Uh, and I had it. <clears throat> I had a lot of uh, experience with police, mm. and mm. I was scared of police. And I never, 
I try not to ever do anything <laughs> to get. But every, every now and then, I, I run into something. Yeah. When I left came on the, the tallest building was the town hall. Wow. Mm -hmm. So I went to top and all these. I went one day, one, one day there, uh, I said I was going to the theater. Mm -hmm. But the Florida theater and Miami theater was right across from each, each other. And I wanted to go to Florida theater to see a cowboy movie. Mm -hmm. But when I got it, the name was up so high, I mm -hmm. couldn't, I couldn't see so. I backed up now. I got on the sidewalk. Uh -huh. I started back up looking up to see. Right. Next thing I heard the police. Oh, wow. She said, where are you going? I said, I'm going to the theater, but I didn't have to find it. I didn't know which one it was. Yes. So, uh, where, where are you from? I said, Cayman Island. Mm -hmm. But what are you doing here? I said, I'm on a banana boat. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, so, what, what, the, uh, what? How long you been here? I said, we just, we, we just got in this, this morning. Right. So get in the car. Oh my. And it, <clears throat> it was aggravation, but it, 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 uh, Hadn't wasn't started yet, mm -hmm. so they had colored section, white section. Oh, okay. And made me get in the car, and they drove me. Uh huh. Came to this house. Mm -hmm. He blew his horn. <clears throat> and. This young man came with, mm -hmm. and he told him to get up, to stand up by the car. Oh, wow. So I think we got your man. Uh-oh. And I was scared right to death. Uh-huh. So, uh, you think this is him? Yes. He said, that's him, all right. That's it. Oh my goodness. So you sure? Yes. Anybody else in the house? So my father's in the house. Mm -hmm. So go get him, bring him out. Mm -hmm. And he said, uh, I want you to look at this. This man and see if this, this, this is the one that stole your car. Mm -mm. Uh, he said, no, no, that wasn't him. It was oh someone goodness. much taller than him. Uh-huh. Say, so you sure? Say, so your son say, but this him? No. He wow. didn't see him. I was the one that went out and talked to him. Mm. And he said, uh, what time you got, what time you got in today? So I, I said, eight o'clock. Mm-hmm. So it couldn't have been him because mm -hmm. the car was stolen early in the morning. Mm. Uh, wow. See, so you can find your way back to the ship. I said, oh, yeah, I didn't want to get back in that police <laughs> car. <laughs> yes, I wow. said, oh, yeah, you see, sure. But that was a long distance. Mm -hmm. The other police said, uh, let him get in. We drop him. Mm -hmm. drop him. So he, he took it, it took 
Çok ben aşağı oluyorum ve hiçbir şey yapamam o zaman. Tıkmen yani işte. Ne? Go boy, don't, 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 uh, don't come, don't come back. Uh, mm. Show the today now. I said today, it will be, be a long time <laughs> now before I come back. And wow, that must have been scary. That. Uh, then a couple of trips after that. Mm-hmm. Well. Uh, I had to go. I had to go ashore during the day, cause in the night I would get lost. I couldn't find. Mm-hmm. So and we we never took a taxi. We we walked every day. Right. And I we went and uh, I went to go to, to this theater. Mm-hmm. And and it was. It was two two shows. It took longer than I thought. And when I got came out, mm-hmm. the lights was on. Boy, mm-hmm. I got me confused. I couldn't remember mm-hmm. if I turned left or right. Right. And I went to my right for a while. And I said no. I, I had some things marked. And mm-hmm. I said this now. I turned around and walked back the other way. And I went there. Mm-hmm. A long, long time. Right. And I said, this is not it either. Mm. But, and I seen some light car lights coming. Mm-hmm. I said, I can stop now, I can stand a bit. I, we were docked, I said a dock. Okay. And I was Flagged him down, mm-hmm. and that was the police. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness! So what's your problem? I say I'm trying to find my way to set the dock. Says set the dock up in where? I said Tampa. Uh-huh. So you near a Jacksonville? Were you Tampa? Wow. I walked, walked half the oh night. Oh my gosh. That's a long distance. He said, oh, all right. So get in, we take it down there. Took, took me right there. Wow. Mm. And then, mm-hmm. uh, Well, it's it's a lo- it's a lot of memories, a lot yeah. of memories flowing back. And as you were just sharing those experiences, I was thinking how different it must have been in those days growing up in Cayman, where you said you know you only had tall ha- tall clock the town hall that was the, cl- the tallest building. Yeah. Um, you probably didn't see very many cars. No. In Cayman then. We knew we knew the. We could tell the cars by their light at night, mm-hmm. which car it was and who it would belong to. Wow. Uh, we, in, in Mount Pleasant, mm-hmm. it was only one, one car. Mm. In, West, in the whole of West Bay, it was about five. Wow. Mm-hmm. And so everybody knew who owned those five cars. And everybody knew who owned the car, could tell them, could tell the cars by the horns uh-huh. in the day. And the night, if you see a certain car come, you could tell them by the, by the light. By the light. That's amazing. Wow. And then you go to a big city like Tampa, and you see all these cars, oh. high-rise buildings, police officers all over. Scared of death. <laughs> Scared yeah. Death. Yeah. But uh, while we were in Tampa, mm-hmm. uh, me and a guy from t- another guy off the ship would, were painting. Mm-hmm. 
were painting the outside of the ship. So we had a stage. So uh, you get coffee time uh, in the afternoon, three o'clock. Mm -hmm. for, for 15, 20 minutes. And then you had to go back to work. Mm -hmm. While he would go and get the coffee, uh, I saw a car drove down by the dock. Mm -hmm. And uh, this lady, and a girl, I guess she was about six or seven mm -hmm. years old, get out of the car. And the little girl had some balloons on a string. And she went right at the edge of the dock mm -hmm. and was flying these balloons and she fell in the water. Wow. I, I heard the screaming from the, from the mother. Mm. Boy, I, it was winter time, cold. Oh boy. And I said, well, I can't go out in our cold water, but I said, I can't make her drown either. Because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. she was splashing around. So I got, I jumped off the stage, swam to her, mm -hmm. and I caught her. And I took her to the pile and made, I told her to hold on to my shoulder, and I held on to the pile until the, the security guard mm -hmm. had called the police. And they came and took, got us in. Mm. And uh, next, mo next morning, there was a big piece in the Miami, mm. in the top of the uh, Tribune. Right. About a seaman saved young girl life. Wow. And. Uh, then the cars started coming. The cars started. Mm -hmm. And they were came manual and now they seen that piece in the paper. Okay. And they were Yes. And they were coming and asking me question. And what one of the men said, uh, Boy, oh, you the hero, man. Yes. You the hero down here now. Oh yeah. The next one look at looked at him saying he'd be a who, hero. But he's fooled you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but in that moment, you just knew that you had to save that little girl. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and oh, they appreciated it, too. Yeah. Wow. That's uh, amazing. So you spent um, 10 years there. Um, did you encounter any, you know, back in those days, I guess it was probably a little bit of the wild, wild west, <laughs> you know, um, a bunch of men at sea and going into the different ports. Uh, how, how rowdy did it get sometimes? Oh, you, uh, when, we, when we out at sea Saturday, mm -hmm. they, they used to sell beer board a ship mm -hmm. and a whole bunch, but I believe I was the only one that did, did, didn't drink beer. Mm -hmm. But the, they get in the pump one room and the, uh, I guess you know Tato, the, the singer. Uh, mm. uh, he was there. He was play guitar and sing and drink. Mm-hmm. Because he never had to work on Saturday. Okay. Uh, and drink till the elbow got so tired of and sleep. Right. But this uh, police mm -hmm. came aboard on Saturday, mm -hmm. and it, uh, or this man came aboard. He had three, two suits, selling full suits, mm -hmm. and at a very reasonable price. Oh, okay. So. Uh, he said, this is the one for you. Mm -hmm. I said, let me try it on. Mm -hmm. I tried it on, stood up, and I couldn't see the tip of my finger. I said, boy, that's the very fit for you. I said, yes. 
<laughs> this is too big, man. Let me try the smaller one. Yes. He said, uh, try it on. And that one, that one was too big, too, but it wasn't as bad. Uh-huh. So I bought that one. Okay. Three hours after I bought it, mm -hmm. I see the police coming. Mm -mm. Say, uh, you you just you just bought a a suit here from a man, mm -hmm. and I wasn't gonna tell him no, but I looked down, I had it on, <laughs> so I couldn't. <laughs> he said, "You want to get in jail?" I said, "No, sir." He said, "That's a stolen suit." Oh no! Give that back to me. I'll oh, take it sure. And I gave it to him. Uh -huh. He said, I don't press no charges on you. Oh, wow. And I gave it. Wasn't very long after that, this came on Bracker. Uh -huh. On the same ship, came cursing and carrying on. Uh -huh. <laughs> so he bought a suit from this man. Uh -huh. <laughs> and the police came, took it back, said with a stolen suit. Oh, my goodness. So both of you got caught up in that. Scam. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Wow. Did you ever experience any, um, you know, you talked about mistaken identity at, at one port. Um, this scammer. Any sort of, like, were you ever robbed? Were you ever a victim of any crimes? As well, you we, to to, we had we had to go through the part, the uh, Suez Canal. Yes. Mm -hmm. And those Egyptians, mm -hmm. they were the biggest thieves in this world. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, they had. They had, had cool, cool, seven up, uh -huh. cases, seven up, seven, uh -huh. and it was a good present. I bought a case, uh -huh. and I put it on them a buck. And later on, I went and got. Opened it up there. That was salt water. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh no. Uh. And, uh, the first engineer bought a, a newspaper. Mm -hmm. Uh, the headline was something about Germany. Uh huh. And he bought, bought that and he put it, threw it in the room. And uh -huh. after what he went and read that. That was seven years old. Oh. <laughs> Probably from World War II then. Yeah. Yes. Oh my goodness. So you guys really, um, you went from small island living to having to move pretty quickly. And yeah, try to keep up, right? Mm -hmm. Yes, tell us a story about the one time you were in the barber shop. Oh, this ship I was on, mm -hmm. we were supposed to take her, take, take her to Trinidad, and then from Trinidad, we were going. Uh, South America mm -hmm. to deliver 
Mm -hmm. uh, but she didn't say it, and I couldn't go back to the immigration. Okay. And I needed a haircut. Right. So I had to go to a barber shop. So I was sitting at the barber. I see when this man came in, and he told me to get in the chair. Mm -hmm. And I got in the chair, and he started trimming me. And through the corner of my eye, I seen him in, another man came in. Mm -hmm. And he went behind the barber. Mm. And I heard, BOM! BOM! Mm -mm. And that barber dropped down in front of me. Oh my and gosh. And I'm scared of these people. Of course. That barber dropped down in, in the front of me. The blood spilt out his head. Oh my goodness. Wow. Boy, I jumped over him and jumped outside. It took me, uh, I think, it was, uh, about a half hour we got mm -hmm. with taxi. Mm -hmm. And I run that now. In you just kept running. I took <laughs> off and I, I, I seen everybody looking, turning around, looking at me. Looking mm -hmm. at and I'm down, down the road. Mm -hmm. And when I got aboard the ship, I jumped, I jumped aboard and sat down on, on the tank top. And then I realized mm -hmm. that I still had the cloth around me. Oh my gosh, from the barber chair. Oh <laughs> yeah. wow. And next mo next morning, in the uh -huh. papers, it was. He had learned about this man getting shot. Oh my gosh. Wow. Shocking. You, you didn't stick around to ask any questions. You were just oh, out the no. door. <laughs> yes. Wow. Did, did you know, I guess he didn't make it if he was probably shot twice, but did you ever hear what might have happened? Like what, what yeah, it was about? In, in the paper, this man caught the, the barb. Mm -hmm. uh, were messing with his wife. Oh, wow. Mm, mm, mm. And he went, went and shot him. Oh, my goodness. That is so crazy. And I, I got half a hair trim. I had to go to another bar. I'll get, <laughs> get the other half. Get. Oh, my gosh. That's probably the worst thing that you saw in terms of violence, hopefully. Uh, no. Oh. Hmm. I went, I, 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 that was theater again. So you really love the movies, I can, I can <laughs> see. <laughs> I, the theater, they were close, close, the, we, we dark. Mm -hmm. Wasn't sure it was another theater, and, but that was in the colored section. I wasn't going to go there. Okay. But I, I went. I went in with it. Didn't take say mm -hmm. anything but me coming in. So mm -hmm. I went. Mm -hmm. And it was night when I got in. Mm -hmm. But I knew, I remember, had all kind of marks. Mm -hmm. This old car was parked on the patio and a big mango tree. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to walk back. And I saw this car hanging it behind me. Mm. When I speed up, he speed up. He, he keep coming till he got breath out. Mm -hmm. And I saw when he opened the door mm -hmm. and I took off. Mm -hmm. And I remember how to cross a, a school, a playground. Right. And had a lot of lights up on the, on the pole. And the, these two of them were tall guys too. Mm. And I see them grabbing at me, my back. Wow. But by that time, I got to the, the school ground and the lights mm -hmm. stopped them. He stopped. And uh, I, I was to where I had to take a right. Mm -hmm. And I, I took a right and I slipped down, went 
up in one yard. Oh my gosh. And I got up and I, I went, got down to the dock and I had to sit down. Uh huh. And the guard asked me what happened. I told him. Mm hmm. See, you went down in that. Mm hmm. That little, my, it's lucky you come, come with a nun. So every day, mm -hmm. in the morning, people got six or seven shooting and, and killing. Wow. Yeah. Wow. So I guess you learned a lesson then. You got to be careful the neighborhoods you might go into. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 And you were looking, looking for good movies all the time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> so your your favorite type of movies would have been the cowboy oh boy. boy movies. Yeah, yeah. How much did it cost to go to the cinema back in those days? Pardon me. What was the cost of a movie ticket? F Fifty cents. Fifty cents. Wow. And in New York, you could you could see three movies tw for twenty five cents. Wow. That would do in a day at night. Yeah. The price went up. Okay. But we we, we had to, we had to go to New York to ship us. Mm -hmm. That's where the company was. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, other than going to the cinema, um, in those days, what else did you enjoy doing on your time off when you weren't working? Uh. Listening to those guys singing and telling lies. <laughs> okay. Those yeah. came on record. They're the biggest lies in this world. <laughs> yeah. Yes. See, he went to Jamaica. He was on. One of Webster ships, a man who come in mm -hmm. home, he bought three little pigs mm -hmm. for his father. Okay. And he was living right on the edge of the bluff, uh -huh. about 60 feet. Right. And he said, his father used to throw, throw the, uh, the food down from the bluff down in a pen by, 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 by the bluff. Uh-huh. And say in six weeks, mm -hmm. that those pigs could eat out of his basket up on, on the bluff. Oh my goodness, no way. <laughs> he had you guys fooled. <laughs> I tell you. But where did you meet? Uh, were there other Caribbean people on the ships that you would have met as well? Oh yeah. Yeah, they were from all uh, over. But mostly were from Cayman, Cayman. Really? Back. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Uh, so you guys really contributed to um, bulk carriers business. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Why? Why do you think they liked recruiting um, young men from Cayman? Because they were smart, and they were, they were good seamen. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Very good. All right. So some fond memories at sea. You come back to Cayman and you decide to open up your own plumbing business. Yeah. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about what that was like. Well, I, uh, I, I only had one man then. Mm hmm And I, I uh, built the company up to where I had nine people working. Mm. And, uh, I've worked in all, all of the condominiums. Mm -hmm. Then they, okay, and uh, north side, mm -hmm. east end, mm -hmm. but down, I, I worked all over Cayman, mm -hmm. and it was a good business. Right, I, I got along good. She so would do like installation for new construction. Mostly oh, repairs. 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 Yeah. Okay. Very good. I did some uh, new construction too. The, uh, uh, 
super, Kirk Supermarket. Mm -hmm. We did that. Mm -hmm. And a couple of more uh, big jobs. Right, okay. So that was a good business to be in. Yeah. 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 And you've lived in West Bay your entire life? My entire life. Wow. You didn't want to try the country out in Savannah? No. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I, I go up there often though, cause I, I got a cousin. Yeah. Cousin in Savannah. Okay. Yep. So at some point you got married. Yeah. You had some kids. And, uh, but I tell you this before, when we, when we used to uh, go fishing, mm -hmm. we, we, the bait we used to use were lobsters. Oh, yes. Wow. Today, mm -hmm. you can't buy them. <laughs> That's for sure. That, back then, lobsters were cheap and easy to get. Easy? I mean, we had plenty mm -hmm. of lobsters. Mm -hmm. You could take a flashlight and go on the uh, Barkers area. Mm -hmm. Spot that in the sea, mm -hmm. and the lobster rips. You could get whatever you, you want. Wow! So you didn't have to go far. No, I mean we never yeah. used to eat too many of them. Yeah, and the counts were the same way. Mm -hmm. we, we may eat count once a month or something like that. Yeah. No, I I could eat them every day for them <laughs> get them. Yeah. Wow. That's amazing. So let's talk about family life. Um, you start your business. You how did you meet your wife? I met. She she lived right up the road from. Okay. Me. <laughs> and she was still going to school. Okay. And uh, I got engaged. Mm -hmm. I I was engaged three years. Oh wow! Because mm -hmm. they they would make her uh, get married if she finish mm -hmm. graduate. Right. And uh, she she worked. I did the plumbing, and she worked cook freeport. Okay. Yeah. She she worked cook freeport thirty three years. Oh wow! And she she was the one who used to take care. Of the money mm, mm -hmm. and uh, doing the banking and stuff, mm -hmm. and uh, we were doing good till mm. she got sick. Mm. She had to quit her job. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I took her all. All, all over the place, the mm -hmm. doctor, Jamaica, uh, mm -hmm. uh, top of Miami, uh, Mayo Clinic. Mm -hmm. And they diagnosed it as a, a dystonia mm. that affects your nerves. Mm -hmm. And uh, she never did get back to work. Wow. Yeah, but lots of lots of good years. Yeah, a lot of good years. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yes. And how many children did you have? Two. Yeah, two, two children. Well, three. One, one died. Okay. Uh, she she lived, only lived three, three days. Oh, wow. Wow, and okay. Mm-hmm, yeah. 
So, you know, you sit back and, and reflect on all of these wonderful memories that you have, family, um, you know, your younger days at sea growing up with your parents. You've had a good life? Uh, when you first go for the first three months, yes, it was terrible. Homesick, yes. But, but after that, we were all, it was all right. Mm -hmm. And we had pretty good luck with hurricanes <laughs> and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And they were big ships. Mm -hmm. So uh, mm -hmm. we made it all right. Got along with that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And your parents must have been really proud that you were doing well at sea. Yeah. And, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Very good. I never forget, uh, I got a letter from my mother when I got in the port saying about the hurricane co coming oh. come to Cape Man. Mm -hmm. But she knew the Lord would take care of her. Mm -hmm. so I was at sea then. Wow. When I got back in the next time I got another letter. Mm -hmm. And she said, thank the Lord we, mm -hmm. we didn't, we, we didn't, uh, We survived the hurricane. All we had was mm. heavy breeze and rain. That's, mm. that's all hurricane is. Right. Yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. Very good. Well, thank you so much for taking a little trip down memory lane with us this morning. Yes, ma'am. Thank, thank you. Too. And sharing some of your fond memories with us. Yeah. And uh, maybe we'll get the opportunity to, to come back. Yes. But we really appreciate you um, taking this time out. And it's just so important for us to share, you know, our history. Um, I always say to people that our individual stories make up our collective history as a people. Yeah. You know, and that's very, very important to preserve and to share for future generations. Yeah. So we really do appreciate you participating and um, sharing a lot of your personal stories with us. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you, you so much. And you're welcome. Thank you for coming. Yes. Hello, I'm Kevin Watler, and this is your CMR Daily Buzz. The mental health status of reigning Miss Cayman Tiffany Conley played a critical role in her apparent defense of assaulting multiple people, including striking a police officer in the face at the detention center. Conley appeared in court to answer six charges, including common assault, property damage, and assaulting a police officer. She pleaded not guilty to all charges. The trial continues on December 5th and 6th when the defense makes its case. Two days have been set aside for the continuation of the trial. Police now say 53-year-old Noel Paul Manning of Bodden Town, who was previously circulated as a missing person, is now wanted by police in relation to sexual offenses. He is no longer considered missing, but is believed to be hiding from authorities. As such, police are appealing for public assistance in locating Manning. Manning is known to be frequenting the Bodentown area and may be living in unfinished or abandoned structures. In other police news, a 39-year-old woman of Georgetown was arrested and later charged on suspicion of attempting to obstruct the course of justice in relation to incidents where she is alleged to have attempted to dissuade a witness from giving evidence in a court case in which the woman is a defendant. She appeared in court on Monday. 
Additionally, police say they also arrested a 57-year-old man of Baden Town for conspiracy to obstruct the course of justice. It is alleged that he conspired with the woman and made contact with the same witness in order to dissuade them from giving evidence. He has been placed on bail as the investigation continues. Thieves continue to target the farmer's market, renewing a call for better security, and we now hear from one of the most recent victims. When I came down here, 100 with a pumpkin gone, five buckler aisle, two, two melon, and the big crate, the big thing where you put my stuff in, it gone, the knife gone. The Hamlin Stevenson market at the Cricket Square was started by local farmers and community leaders. It provides a venue for Cayman farmers, artists, craftsmen, chefs, and entrepreneurs to showcase their produce and merchandise to residents and visitors alike. Now for your CMR weather update, it's brought to you by WG Charters, sunrise at 621, partly cloudy skies are expected, now when the temperature is at 86 degrees Fahrenheit and the humidity at 69% like the forecast calls for, it will feel close to 100 degrees Fahrenheit. Winds light and variable and the sun sets at 559. At night time, the temperature falls to around 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Now looking forward, a typical pattern of hot days and warm nights with scattered showers is expected. CMR weather updates are brought to you by WG Charters. They offer private boat trips for a great price and we encourage you to support them. Now for some regional and international news. Hurricane Fiona destroyed 159 million U.S. dollars worth of crops in Puerto Rico when it hit a month ago, decimating fields of plantains, bananas, and other crops, the island's agriculture minister said on Tuesday. The U.S. territory's fragile agriculture sector is barely starting to recover from the Category 1 hurricane, which hit the island's southwest region on September 18th. And unleashed what officials described as a historic flooding and dozens of landslides. It also destroyed more than 90% of crops across Puerto Rico. The United Kingdom has lifted the visa requirement for Guyanese travelers and as of November 9th, they are able to visit the UK for up to six months with no visa. This was announced by the British High Commissioner to Guyana, Jane Miller, during a press conference with the Guyanese president on Tuesday. European Union leaders enter a crucial stretch this week to make sure runaway energy prices and short supplies don't further tank their struggling economies and foment unrest. At the same time, they need to keep all 27 members united in their opposition to Russian President Vladimir Putin. The European Commission is proposing to retarget some 40 billion euros in budget aid towards those most affected by the crisis. That's it for now on The Daily Buzz. Thank you for joining me. Please stay safe and God bless. Thank you for tuning in to another episode of The Cold Hard Truth on Bobo 89.1 FM. Cayman's number one talk show is live weekdays from 7.30 a.m. Never miss an episode again. Watch anytime on CMR's Facebook and YouTube channels for the latest show episodes. Don't forget to follow us online on our social media channels and visit CaymanMarlRoad.com for all the latest news and community happenings. 